the 40 Year Old Boy Podcast with your friend Mike. It's the 40 Year Old Boy Podcast that you like. Cause it's free. Here he comes now. He's gonna sit down. It's gonna start. Hey, what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40-Year-Old Boy Podcast. Look, hey, get off my back, all right? It's a fucking holiday week. It's not. It's not a holiday week. Last week was a holiday week. And we managed to get a show out uh, on a Thursday morning. And it felt great. I'm not going to lie to you. Last week, I felt I was uh, I was so excited. I did the show on Wednesday morning. I went and uh, picked up people at the airport. I came home here, finished the show that night, got it posted for you Thursday for Thanksgiving. You guys had it. It was rocking. People were very nice. They reached out. And you know what? I will tell you this, uh, and this is going to sound ignorant as I say this uh, with the circumstances of this week. You know, people reached out last week after I put the show out, and they said, oh, man, I am so happy the show's out on time. Thank you so much, man. And there, our uh, listener, Kevin Davis, was like, hey, you know, I know how happy uh, you feel getting the show out. He said that a couple of weeks ago. I know you feel great getting the show out on time. I do. There's no doubt. Um, and, and I was, and you know what, last week I was like, all right, because you know what, I got a list, I got plans. We all know that. Uh, and so we're, we're incorporating those, making those work the way that they should work and things like that. And you guys are all very nice. And thank you so much for reaching out. And also thank you to everybody who's reached out to me this week to see if I was okay. (laughs) I'm fine. Um, the way I would describe this, I, I guess, uh, how would I describe this? I don't know. You know what it is? Uh, last week, like I said, we fucking pounded it. We were ready. Every week we're getting podcasts out there. We're rolling things. To, uh, they're fine, sort of fine, I guess. And then this week was just a, I just, I was, and I was cruising on a high after last week. And then it just, uh, you know, everything kind of, you know, sometimes you miss, sometimes you swing and miss. How about that? Let's put it that way. Uh, you know what? I, I just, all right, uh, this might be a good way to put this. Uh, I couldn't get it up this week. I, 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 I tried. I sat down here on uh, on Wednesday a couple of times, and I sat here yesterday, Thursday a couple of times, and I just, I just, you know, I kept starting, and it just, it was just, it was just limp dick fucking nothing, you know, and I, I, and and it might not have been, I'll tell you that. Let's also talk about this. Uh, um, you know, certainly, you uh, if you if you can't get it up in the in the customary sense, then you know, because that's not happening. But uh, verbally, maybe you know, that's what I need, dudes. I need some kind of verbal Viagra. What can I do? Is that Coke? Is that something I can do? Is there some kind of fucking uh, uh, tongue Cialis I can make that I get my fucking mouth and brain working together? I don't know. I'm not sure. But I, uh, I, I, I that's what it was. It, it really, because again, I had, it, it, there's this ennui that invests itself uh, inside me, or I, I should say falls over me, not in like a mist. It's a, I have an, a mystical ennui, an ennui of mist, a misty ennui. <laughs> I don't know. Jesus, fuck. See, I was much better off with the microphone turned off. That's how I was as a guy. Um, so, hey, whatever the fuck. I'm not going to turn this into a, a treatise uh, on me going, ah, boo-hoo, because it's not boo-hoo. It just it happened, man. So here we are on a Friday. Show's coming out. Um, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm Because I'm not, I, I just, because you know, nobody needs to see me fucking Ouroboros myself and fucking and go, oh, and then this happened and this, and eh, fuck, you know, because I got nothing to tell you except that I didn't get the show out on time and I'm trying to deal with it on my fucking skull and you don't care. We've already wasted fucking two minutes on that. Two minutes. Yeah, yawning. Holy shit. Yawning two minutes into the goddamn show. That doesn't make any sense. Um. So the, uh, uh, this week, uh, it's, let's just call it, it's, it's a whiff. This, this week is a whiff. It's a rain out. It's a strike out, whatever. This will not count against your, uh, your standard amount of episodes that come out this year. You know, you get, you know, you get at least 52. That happens. It's a full year of episodes. Um, and then occasionally we have what I'm going to call bonus episodes <laughs> like this week's where I come in and I, I tell you that I got, you know, I sat down at the microphone and just didn't fucking you know, I was, I was, you know what I am? I'm fucking, I'm Marky Mark, man. I'm fucking uh, uh, Dirk Diggler in the in the driver's seat. I got this blonde surfer next to me, and I'm in the passenger seat. I got the blonde surfer in the driver's seat staring at me, and I'm trying to get it up for him. And I'm like, all right, just don't say anything, man. Don't fucking say anything. I'm trying to get a show done. Don't say anything. I'm concentrating here. Uh, and any minute now, like five surfer bros are going to show up and kick the fuck out of me, which would actually be fine because I didn't have a show. I'd have something to talk about. I, w- I honestly wish five surfer bros would show up here and knock the shit out of me and leave me laying in a parking lot coughing up my my own blood because then I'd have a goddamn fucking show to tell you about. Um, instead, we've just got me again with the, uh, and then this head, I tried to talk, uh, shut up. Uh, but it just, it just was one of those, way, you know, I'm, I'm, we're coming to grips. We're, we're getting active again. We got a list. We got plans. 
And, and I can only tell you about that so many weeks in a row because that's right now. That's the focus of my life is getting that all squared away, uh, the mailing list and, and getting, uh, you know, everything else squared away, whatever the fuck you know. So uh, so to go ahead and recap, because I could recap Thanksgiving for you if, if you wanted. I guess I could do that because uh, what I planned on doing here is I was just like, all right, you know what, let's give them uh, – Let's give them a festive best of. Let's do that. Or just a, or that, is that the, how about a best of, best of, a best of, best of, best of. How about that? Or a festive best of. There you go. How about a festive best of? We'll call it that. Um, that's what I'm thinking of doing is giving you a festive best of. How about that, folks? Is that cool? You like that? Everybody? Everybody nodding in agreement? No? Nobody nodding in agreement? Everybody hating the idea? I don't know what's happening with you people out there. I can't see. We need to figure it out where I can actually see into your homes and watch you guys do this. That's the next advancement that's coming. I will tell you this. All right, and again, I'm going to use this. This is me going to be – I'm jerking off now, and I know that, and I apologize, but here it comes. Uh, you don't care. You have jobs. Everybody's got jobs. they got their business. Everybody's taking care of their own business, and it's fucking cool, and I appreciate you for it. And those are hard jobs. You get up in the morning. You go to your work. You're, on the, you're, you're, you're out hustling, bussing. You're working nine to five. What a way to make a living, right? Um, it's all taken and no giving out there, and Dabney Coleman's being mean to you. Nobody likes that. He's fucking staring at you from across the desk. And then you got to talk to Jane Fonda about how to kill the fucking guy. Uh, you want to use your head, but the fucking boss doesn't seem to let you. Sometimes, I'll tell you this, I, I know this because I've worked in offices before, I'd swear that man is out to get you. I'm not going to lie. That boss is a fucking uh, creep or a cretin, if you will, or, uh, or a crap. Perhaps he's a crap. You know what he is? He's a, That's what he is. He's just a doughy uh, a fucking piece of nonsense who's crisped up a little bit and then rolled up with Nutella in his center. That's your boy. What if your boss was a crip, Nutella crap? That's a bad job. I'm not going to lie to you. If you, are, if you are at a job and you're taking orders from a Nutella crap, uh, I like saying crap. I know it's a crepe. I guess it's a crepe. But, well, in some countries, it's a crap. It's like uh, it, 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 La Boheme. It's an opera. Uh, it's a crap. It's not a crepe. Nobody eats a crepe because it is a crepe is uh, isn't that a material right? You can make pants out of it. I got my crepe pants on while I ate a crepe. You, you, nobody has a crepe pants on while they ate a crepe. Oh my god! Wait, I'd make a pant, pants out of a crepe. What if I did that? What if I made a fucking a melty cheesy Havarti crepe pants? I made them and they were warm and I'd strap them on. Oh, nothing. There's nothing better than having your balls nestled in a goddamn Nutella crepe, even if it is your boss. Although I guess that's sexual harassment. Although hey, you know what? You you're one the one ball nestling. If he comes to you and he's like, "Hey, nestle your balls inside me. I'm a warm Nutella crap." Are you, are you, are you pressured? Are you going to go to fucking HR? Who goes to HR to re- to report their Nutella crap boss if he wants to nestle your balls when it's warm and it's delightful? Um, all right, I, I can't argue with that logic. You do what you want to do. Look, maybe it's just me. If I had a boss who was made of a Nutella crap, I would absolutely soak my balls in him. Um, so, so, but, but you guys do your gig and that's the thing. It's uh, jobs are hard and we all know this. And this is essentially, uh, this is the second longest job I've ever had. Even though if it's not, you know, I know if someone's like, oh, it's not really a job, dude. Yeah, I get it. Okay. I sit at a microphone and I fucking talk. I know not really a job. Fuck you and your imposter syndrome. Jump up a fucking bridge. Um, but still for me, this is a gig. You know what I mean? I'm, I, 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 I report to work every week and I punch in and you guys, uh, or, I'm, I'm having some problems with tardiness recently, which is not unlike me in other jobs, but it's uh, but still we show up to work every day because we have to, that's what we want to do. And also this is enjoyable and this is fucking great. And I love it very much. Uh, it's just that I feel uh, the, the, it's not that here's the thing. And you know this, and I'll say it again because why not? It's not that I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. It's that uh, I don't think I can do that anymore because I'm bad at it, and, and I don't know why th- uh, that's incongruous, and I don't know why that ma- that matters, especially when people are listening and writing me and tell me they love it, and then I'm like, yay! And then I then the next very next because look, all right, this is totally true. The last two weeks I did shows that I thought were fucking awesome, like two and a half hour shows, and I just and I I have to build up a firewall against that thing that says. Oh, man, you got to make another awesome show. What the fuck? I, I know because it's my gig. It's the job. It's what you do. And you know that. You go to work every day. We all do work. Everybody does our work. Um, and I know, like I said, you don't think podcasting is work or whatever the fuck. Or you don't think comedy is work. And I and I get that all the fucking time. And that's fine. Um, and also, a lot of that could be inside me. That could be a weird fucking, like I said, imposter syndrome. Or, or hey, buddy, why aren't you making things with your hand? With your hands. Why don't you go make a hitching post for horses? I don't know why that's in my head. Probably because I'm playing Red Dead. But yeah, if, I, if someone's like, hey, why don't you build a living room, man? Why don't you hang some drywall? That's what a man does. And I'm like, nah, a man doesn't do that. A man sits at a microphone and makes fun of the idiot who's hanging drywall because he doesn't know how to fucking do this. See, and that's probably bad. And I'm not really making fun of you drywall people if you're listening to me while you're hanging. What if I picture a guy literally mid drywall hang as I said that and going, huh? What? How dare you? 
He drops the fucking drywall on his fucking iPod to crush me symbolically. But it didn't hurt me, friend. All you did was hurt your iPod. And now you got to do another fucking nine hours of hanging drywall to make money to buy a new one. And then you know what you're going to do? You're going to fucking fire me up and listen to me again and go, ah, I got to give this guy another chance. Chance number 47, as you've previously thrown the iPod into the goddamn wood chipper or possibly into a garbage disposal because he didn't care for the things that I said, not realizing, oh, uh, he doesn't live in there. I'm just killing my own stuff. I'm, I'm cutting off my own electronic nose despite my electronic face. That's not good. Why am I going ahead and destroying my iPod every time Mike says something I don't like him saying? Does anybody use iPods anymore? They don't anymore, right? You use your phones. And nobody can plug their earphones and their earbuds into their phones. Are they just? Is that Apple's plan? Apple's plan is just a fucking. Uh, they're push us all off a cliff where they're just like, yeah, you know what? You can't use any of your devices the way you want to anymore. Everybody's doing this shit, man. It's like fucking. What the hell? I, I, because I'll tell you this. I, uh, with Apple, you know, they've got the the fucking, you know, the computers and then this and they, they. I don't know. I sound like the oldest grandfather of all time. Because I, you know why? Because I'm just filling air because I forgot what I was going to say. It's my train of thought. So I'm just filling air by saying things. Um iPods, phone, earbuds, and and then uh, jam the ear. You, you got to use your earphones in there. Fuck, what the fuck was I going to say? I was talking about how everybody just makes this arbitrary decision. Oh, the oh, the here it was. Um, like Apple, they're killing iTunes. So I don't know. I don't know how you're supposed to listen to your music, or you can't add more music. I guess the iTunes Store isn't open. Apple Music is open, but not the iTunes Store. But and I think the differences are you don't. Technically, none of us really own anything that we buy from the iTunes store. Essentially, you're paying a rental fee. Is that correct? Am I am I am I wrong in that? Because everybody said when they were doing the iTunes store, they were going to kill it, and then you weren't going to be able to move things around. Because I'm already having issues with my iTunes store. Like I try to, I try to drag something in and play it, and it won't it won't let me drag things into my iTunes anymore. Um, which is which is not fucking cool. That's not something I like doing. Because again, Mech sends me files and I go to drag them in, and it doesn't appear like in the in the listicle until I click play. If I click play, then it appears in iTunes, and then you can find it. But I can't drag stuff into iTunes anymore. Eh, whatever the fuck. Um, but that's it's just why are you why are you fucking with people and and the things that they know how to do? It's like I have I have um, the Microsoft Office suite. Okay, so I got Word and Excel and PowerPoint and some other bullshit that I've never opened that I don't know how to use. Literally, all I use is Word. I don't know how to do Excel. I can't do any of that stuff. But Word is no longer like I don't own Word. I used to own Word on my old computer, but to update it for this computer, I I get it. And it's like almost like a streamable download of Word that I pay a yearly fee for. So I don't even really own I don't own Word. I don't own the program. They can't they're renting it to me that I, I have it on my computer and I can use it, but eventually if they if it goes out of you know, if they improve it, I have to pay for the improvements because otherwise I can't use it. And that is just a fucking drag, man. You know, and that's, and that's what I'm talking about with the ear with the phones, where you got phones where you can't plug your ear earbuds in there anymore. You gotta wear those our air pods, which are can we all agree how stupid you look with cum dripping out of your ears? Is that okay? I mean, literally, it's just, you just fucking look like somebody fucking shot. Like, you know what is Richard Pryor's monkey? Yang, 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 into your fucking ear, and that's the monkey cum dripping out of your fucking ear hole on both sides. You got fucking tag team. You got, sp- you got, you got your head, your skull got spit roasted by a couple of fuck monkeys, and now you got fucking monkey jizz dripping out of both ears, but you just think you're enjoying some glorious music from Taylor Swift. You're not. You might be trying to shake it off, but all of us are staring at you and going, holy fuck, monkey jizz ears, get the fuck out of the crosswalk. We're not happy with you or your choices. But the problem is all of us have to wear those. Now, I, I have the Beats by Wireless, you know what I mean? So those are at least, they at least are black and red, so they look like, no, no, it looks like an alien fucked me in the head, which is fine. I can, I can live with that. But uh, I haven't given myself over to the AirPods. I, I don't think, because you know why? I know they'd fall out. I don't give a fuck. People are like, oh, it's a great fit. It fits totally. And I, you don't know my ears. Don't fucking tell me about my goddamn ears. My ears are not ready for this. My ears can't squeeze. My ears can't hug. My ears are different. My ears are phony. My ears are fake. My ears are completely independent of you and your fucking ear thought. So I, unless Apple comes up the way to go, hey, can we measure your ear holes? Then I'll be like, yeah, that's fine. Although that's going to be fucking weird. How gross is that? What if you go to the Apple store and it's just fucking geniuses jamming their pinkies in your ears? That's what I want. I want genius wet willies. That'll fucking get me some listening pleasure. Uh, I want the, what a fucking dystopian future we're heading toward. Either monkey spit roast your skull or you get genius wet willies. Do you want either of those? No, you don't. All you wanted to do was calm down and listen to Led Zeppelin. That's all you wanted. You just wanted to have, you just wanted to listen to Spoon in your ears. Hey, let's, let's do that. Uh, they say that you are the You just want Florence and the Machine to, to cradle your brain, to nestle you in happiness. 
It is like a train on a track. I moved backwards, so I didn't uh, blow out the microphone. Um, but instead, Apple de- deems that you now have to look stupid. That's what they just did. They just went, hey, everybody looks stupid. This is, this is like if they somehow came up with a, a new way. Hey, here, here's a new way for you to listen to music. It's much more better. It's better than the AirPods. Oh, really? Thank God. It could anything look stupid than the AirPods. And they go, okay, here. And it's a full outfit, a full Steve Jobs costume. Glasses, fucking black shirt, khakis, whatever the fuck, or jeans, whatever you wore. And you just got to wear that around. It's a full body immersive music experience. Would you do it? Let me ask you this. If it had the amazing sound quality of a, of a Bose or a Blaupunkt, is Blaupunkt still a, a guy? I don't even know. I, t- I mentioned that to somebody this weekend. I was talking about the Blaupunkt stereo. And I said, I don't even know if they're, they're still around. Um, perhaps they are. Perhaps they are still dominating your earwaves. Ha ha, look at me with the earwaves. I say that there instead of airwaves. Uh, perhaps they're amazing. But if you could buy, if instead of Apple, if Apple said, hey, look, you guys, we're tired of giving you jizz ears, all right? Nobody wants to have cum dripping out of anybody's ears. And that's it. Just as a foolish idea. What were we thinking, right? Huh? They all clap themselves in the back and everybody applauds and goes, where's the iPhone 12, please? And they said, wait a minute, before we bring out the iPhone 12, check this out. Do you want a full body immersive music experience? Yes. Do you really want to feel kiss in your chest? I do. What if you had to nestle your balls into a a warm Nutella crepe, or you could nestle your balls into the warm sounds of Nine Inch Nails? Yes. All right. Well, brace yourselves. Here is the Jobs Pod. And they walk out, and it's uh, it's just a bunch of you know rah rah fucking cheerleader models all dressed up like Steve Jobs. The glasses, the fucking the, the turtleneck, whatever the fuck it was, uh, the the whole genius ensemble. And you had to wear that, but it was a full. It was like diving into. A, you, you, then you put it on, you're like, ah, oh, this look fucking looks stupid. But they hook them up to EKG machines and they test their heart rates and all this stuff. And it turns out that they're getting the music. Like you can't even hear it. Like you know, some annoying motherfucker sits next to you and he's got his ear. But they're cranked up so loud you can actually hear them bursting out of his ears. By the way, I'm that annoying motherfucker because I can't hear. I got tinnitus, so I crank my fucking sound all the way up. Literally, my my I never. That's why I'm worried about these fucking the cum ears. There's no way you could you could satisfy me. There's no way you could give me enough sound in my ears if I wore those things. I because I try to believe me. I try to push these fucking things in all the way. I want them to meet in the middle of my head. That way I'll get all the music I possibly can. But instead I've got them. They're just kind of hanging on for dear life in my weirdly shaped ears and about to plummet to the fucking ground at any goddamn moment. And thank God they had wires on them because I could find them. But not not anymore. Like I said, now you get cum dripping out of there. I'm not gonna find it. It's gonna fall out of my head, bounce down the street, hop into a sewer. I go to find it. There's a clown and he bites me. I don't want to be bitten by a fucking clown, Apple. You see what you did? You set this whole fucking thing up. You came up with the loose-fitting cum earbud, not even measuring. You don't even have the fucking decency to come to my house and measure my ear holes. And then sure enough, I walk down the street, plunk, plunk, sewer, me reach down, clown bite, bite. That's fucking terrible. What a horrible turn of events. And it's because of you. And, and, you know, the ghost of Steve Jobs must haunt Tim Apple all the fucking time, just floating around staring at him and just saying, hey, fuckhead, what did you invent now? Oh, cum ears? Good for you. Dude, I wore a turtleneck that was more innovative than you. And then fucking Tim Apple went, hold the phone, Chuck. And he fucking stole the Jobs Ghost Thunder, and he made the Jobs Pod. And you throw that fucking thing on with the goddamn turtleneck, the weird glasses, and the fucking pants, and, uh, and, and you don't even get to hear it. Like I said, uh, you get the sound bursting out of people's earbuds all the time. That's me. But now if you get the jobs pod, it goes into every one of your nerve endings. It goes into your pores. You just absorb music through your goddamn pores. Now, look, I'm sure in seven to ten years they're going to find out that that causes some sort of weird cancer nobody's even named yet. Holy fuck. That's got to be like a, you know, oh, my God, did you hear about Bob? No. No, he got baseline cancer. What the fuck is that? I don't know. But his heart only bo- <laughs> his heart beats now. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. Uh, really? That sounds strange. Is that like an oompa march? How does that? Well, it all depends on what you listen to. It depends on what, you know, right now, because I'll tell you what, I, I've, I've been listening to synchronicity, and now my heart beats in the, uh, the bass line of wrapped around your finger. Oh, my God, is that terrible. But I, it's because of the jobs pod, baby. Baseline cancer. If you listen to a lot of hair metal, you get weedly deedly deedly cancer because that's the the fucking solos weedly deedly 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 like that. Uh, but that's look, but that's for the that's for later. And I'm 52 now. Give me the jobs pod. Let me immerse myself in some warm ass fucking music that nobody else can hear. I want to absorb music through my pores because I don't want to look stupid. I don't want to look like I got fucking again skull fucked by two fucking chimps and they just fucking blast me full of goddamn monkey goo. I don't want that. And it drips out of my ears and everybody goes, why? Well, that's a that's a hard price to pay to go ahead and have to listen to Steve. Earl. It is. I got to look stupid because I want to hear Copperhead Road, you fucking dicks. 
Ah, uh, but the jobs pod. See, that's where you do. You enrobe, you enrobe yourself. And, we all, and then eventually we all walk around because then Apple's half of a cult anyway. Then you look around, you see the people wearing the jobs pod, and you're like, oh, all right, here we go. These people have totally embraced the Apple aesthetic, aesthetic, if you will. The day I can absorb fucking music through my pores is the day I never leave this fucking apartment. That's just it. It's not like I've got to go. Wait, that actually sounds like I got to go get music elsewhere. I can get music here. I could listen to music in my house. But through my pores, oh, my God. I get Again, I got my balls nestled in a warm Nutella crepe, and I got my jobs pod rolling, and I am just, I, that's it. I'm a happy man. I'm never going anywhere. I'm not, I'm just, I'm sitting here right now. Just, just find me uh, a, a, you know, a fucking Jada De Laurentiis fleshlight, and I will never leave. But it's, but it's not a vagina; it's her mouth. It's, that seems aggressive, and, and I don't even. You know what? I'm gonna take that back. I, I, I apologize to everybody listening, particularly the De Laurentiis family, uh, because they're very upset about the fact that I just said that. And also, I'm a little upset. She's, she's a. A lovely, beautiful, wholesome person who should live in my mouth. Certainly, there's no doubt about that. But I, but you shouldn't go ahead and I couldn't have some uh, uh, with, with disembodied, yeah, a disembodied piece of her to just jam my fucking cock into. That just seems fucking aggressive and awful. I don't want to do that. I want to have a conversation with her. I want to talk to her about fucking scallopini before I rail the fuck out of her. Right? Wouldn't that be a good thing? She and I have a nice guy. Kind of, hey, how do you? Well, how do you feel? listen, uh, Jada? How do you feel about tetrazzini? I love it. And here's a recipe. Fantastic. In the meantime, do me a favor. Bend over the counter while you're doing that, and I'm going to get on my knees and I will try to listen to you while I am. Oh my Christ! Buried face first in your lasagna. Um, that seems like again. I I apologize to all of you for the imagery that you're getting right now. <laughs> you're thinking you're so all right. There's Mike fucking eating Jada's pussy from behind, and she bends over a counter and she makes goddamn tetrazzini. Good for him. Actually, you know what? Maybe that's an image you guys want. Maybe you've been waiting for that. Maybe you're like, oh. And I'll tell you what. I think we can all agree that is that is clearly a Friday image. That is not a Thursday image. On Thursday, we never go there. Thursday, we have a wholesome show. But then you get to Friday, I got my balls in a warm crepe of Nutella and me fucking eating Jada from behind. And you guys are like, oh, Mike, how dare you? And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. I should have held this for Thursday. This is more of a Thursday thought. Uh, no, it's a Friday thought. I apologize. It's not a, th- a Thursday thought. It's a Friday thought. I almost killed my own premise there. I mean, actually, I think I did, but I think I saved it, hopefully. I don't know. So I was going to give you a... Uh, a festive bestive, uh, where I was going to give you, because again, I thought to myself, but I already were, look, I look now, we're 20 minutes into this fucking show. I should just make, the, you know, I could just do this, right? I can get away with this. Because that's the thing is, I always give myself the hard time where I'm just like, ah, oh, these hardworking people, they, they, they wait for more words from me. Because that's, I, that's the thing I'm running into now when I'm thinking about the things I'm going to do on the road. I'm talking about doing a show on the road. And, uh, you know, I, I liked doing a long show. You know, I, I kind of enjoyed it and it was fun. Uh, but also I have to think of the fact that I'm, I'm just spreading scoliosis to and fro. I'm, I, that's why I'm, I'm Johnny scoliosis. Fuck apples. I'm bringing scoliosis to your town by making you sit in rickety bad theater chairs while I get up and I wax rhapsodic for four and a half hours. And then I was a child and then I grew up. No, uh, nobody fucking cares. Shakespeare, throw your skull away and give everybody a fucking break. Um, and that's what I do. I'm poor Yorick. I walk back and forth and I tell you stories. So I'm running into that because I'm, you know me, I'm a, I tend to be, I don't know, what's the word I'm going to look for here? I, uh, ee, verbose. I went and played poker last night. Now you're thinking to yourself, Mike, why did you play poker when you did a podcast do? Look, man, I had to get out of my fucking apartment. I was driving myself fucking crazy. I was, t- you know, literally since Tuesday night, uh, I've been alone in my apartment and I, you know what I did? I, I've, uh, three different times, three separate times. That was Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and then Thursday. And we're here at Friday. I, I'm doing the show before I got a chance to do it. I tore my face off like the guy in Poltergeist at the mirror. You ever see that? That's what I did. I was like, it is <laughs> my favorite part of that. Is like, it's like drip, drip, rip, rip, drip, drip, rip, 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 drip, drip. And then he goes, <laughs> and he fucking pulls his whole fucking face off. And that's happened to me three times this week. Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday. And I, I just, uh, I'm tired of it. I don't want to tear my own face off anymore. Um, that's a good analogy because that's what happens. You just, I, I try to do the show. I sit and I try to talk. It doesn't happen. I kill myself and I'm mad about it. And then I get up and I, I'm sad and I'm like, all right, maybe I'll take a breather. And then I read and then I eat and then I walk around. And I'm like, Hmm, maybe I should eat something again. And then I do, this is uh it's all, I'm in a weird, I'm in a weird spot. You know, I'm Edward, I, I'm, I'm Ed Norton. Uh, you, you caught me at a weird time in my life. Now let's watch all of the credit buildings collapse and I will hold your hand, Marla. After railing the fuck out of you, pretending to be Brad Pitt. Um, so I, I uh, yeah, so now I'm here talking to you. And so I put myself in this position where I'm like, you know what, dude? A new show uh, has to be a, uh, you know, a long show. It's got to, yeah, look at you. You got to bring, and I don't, 
Let's put it this way. It's not like I'm like, oh, I better keep going. I mean, you hear the shows. They roll. I mean, I, they, if I get in a roll and I'm talking and shit like that, and all of a sudden I look at an hour and 40 minutes, I'm like, holy fuck, what the hell happened? But then sometimes the, I will comfort myself with this thought when I sit down. I'm like, all right, dude, look. Just fucking people just want original content from you. Just sit down. If you do an hour show, everybody's happy. Sit down and do an hour. That'll be totally cool. But I mean, hell, I get a half hour of fucking plugs. So that means you get a half hour of material and then a half hour of me telling you to go shop in my name. And that's not fun for anybody. That's not a podcast anybody wants to listen to. Nobody's sitting down and going, oh, hold on. Let's go listen to, hold on, I'm going to crack my knuckles. One knuckle. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go listen to a Mike Schmidt commercial. How about that? Let's listen to Mike Schmidt talk about all the things we need to spend money on. Holy fuck. No. You come to the show because you want to hear me talk about the jobs pod, baby. Uh, the jobs pod, baby. Too cold. The jobs pod, baby. Too cold. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, boy. Don't listen to that while you're listening. Wearing the jobs pod. Your heart beats like that. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. We're all going to get fucking weird baseline cancer. It's going to be fun. Uh, would that, would that, it fucks with the way you walk, right? Like the, like, cause there's electricity in your body and it's run by your heart. But if your heart heads up, cause always, if everybody get a heart murmur and they get some weird heartbeat, where do they get that boom, 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 if, you're, if your heart is beating strangely. Oh, what the fuck? I don't know. I'm not a guy. Shut up. Move on. <laughs> You've exhausted the premise of the job site. It was so funny. Don't cheapen it. Don't cheapen it by kind of trying to come up with all, all sorts of different baselines. And then act pretend like you're a cardiologist who knows nothing about hearts. Nobody wants to know that. You're barely no podcasting. You're talking about hearts. Uh, I can talk about green hearts. No, I can talk about pink hearts. I can talk about green clovers, blue diamonds, and parapet heart shoes. Um, all right. So it's going to be a festive best of, uh, yeah, you know, a show from the past. But I guess I don't really need to do that, do I? I don't know. Because like I said, I put the fucking pressure on myself to go ahead and and, uh, and, throw, and throw you a ton of words. I, how do you listen to this? I, I, I don't even know. Now, again, because I'm... Uh, I'm convincing myself not to listen now just from my, my acti- actions of the last two minutes. What a fucking dope. Uh, did you have a nice Thanksgiving? I had a nice Thanksgiving. I'll recap that a little bit. I went to my brother's house. It was totally fun. Uh, there was a ton of food. There was kugel and turkey. There was stuffing and, and party potatoes. Let's go ahead and talk about this really quick. My mom used to make a thing called party potatoes. And, uh, you know, you, you boil potatoes. Or you, or you skin the potatoes. You boil them. You slice them. And scal- they're like scal- It's like an egg rotten. It's basically cheddar cheese and sour cream and some onion. And it's mixed up with the potatoes. And then you bake it. And it's, uh, oh, my God, it's all creamy and delicious. It's super good. And um, my brother is a fantastic cook. And he said he was making party potatoes. And I was like, oh, my Christ, I haven't had those in years. I made them myself once uh, when I made a dinner for my ex because I I had not made anything. And I made steak and party potatoes. And I made a jalapeno slaw that was really delicious. You know, if I I convince myself to follow a recipe and I get things done, uh, I can cook stuff. I made meatballs for this occasion, although I overdid my meatballs. I was very upset. It was, the fr- it was like the fifth time I've made these meatballs, and the first time I think I messed them up. They were a tad dry, just a skosh, and also I put them on the top rack of the oven so they cooked super fast, and uh, and I crisped them too much because, like, all right, <laughs> I know all of the reasons they were wrong. I, You know, you make the meatballs, then you fry them, you know, you get a crust on them, and then you bake them in the oven. Well, I fried them too long because I made a, I had a cast iron skillet, and I didn't know it would, you know, it cooked them through, basically. So I was trying to get a crust all the way around, and in doing so, I wound up cooking the entire meatball and then baking it in the oven, so I dried it out a little bit. Um, but still delicious, but not nearly as delicious as they were before the other four times I've made them. That's right, four times. Um, but then I go to my brother's house, and he makes, you know, he makes stuffing. And he makes a turkey, and uh, and also, but then he made the party potatoes. He brings them out. He's like, "Hey, man, I threw a bunch of garlic in the party potatoes. You know, that's that's my own little uh, touch." And I like garlic, so I'm like, "All right, cool." And the garlic was not the offensive presence in the party potatoes. Again, it was the it was the same cheesy, sour, creamy goodness with a, a fucking spike of garlic, which I enjoyed. But here's what I didn't like: my brother had fucking stroke. That seems aggressive. I went to his house and ate for free, except I brought meatballs, which cost like sixty five dollars. Um. Seriously, veal. What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, he made these potatoes, and they were, you know, I, I, I go to scoop them out. Now, again, here's what you do. You fucking boil the potatoes. First of all, you peel the potatoes, and then you boil them. Then you slice them in discs. 
And then you pour the juice in them, the fucking cheese and the sour cream and all that. So, and then they bake. Delightful. It's a delicious. And if you want to spike them up with some garlic, I throw a little extra pepper in there because I like a little pepper. I think it's great. Here's what my brother does. I go to I go to the party potatoes bowl. Here's what my brother, he boiled the potatoes. He didn't peel them. He boiled them and then he quartered them. So they were like fucking potato wedges. They weren't potato discs. I can't I can't celebrate Thanksgiving with a wedge. I got I need a goddamn disc. You think Squanto ate a wedge? Squanto didn't eat a fucking wedge. Squanto ate a goddamn disc. You think fucking Sacagawea ate a wedge? No. Sacagawea chopped up some fucking discs for the pilgrims and all their friends. You, you think Sitting Bull ate a fucking wedge? No. He'd be furious at you. Him and Geronimo would have a fucking meeting, and they'd throw you out of the goddamn sweat lodge if you brought a wedge to the party. You gotta bring a fucking disc when you make the party potatoes. Jesus, what the fuck, man? Who do you think you are? Ugh, terrible. You think Hiawatha went ahead and had a fucking wedge? He did not. Hiawatha was a disc man. And you fucking queer out Thanksgiving by putting up the fucking wedges? What is wrong with you, man? You queered the whole deal. You poisoned the stream. Ugh. Did I eat them? Of course. I did. They're potatoes. And I love skin, to pota- or skin, skin on potatoes. I love it. I don't, you know, to me, a smashed red, that's delightful. Leave the skin on. Smash them up with a fork. Maybe crisp them up a little bit in the fucking pan. Throw a little garlic, salt, pepper, whatever you got to fucking do. A little onion. A little caramelized. It's delicious. But don't, don't. Here's the thing. Then tell me I made cheesy garlic potato wedges. Don't tell me I made potato, party potatoes, because you didn't. You didn't make mom's party potatoes. You made you made Lenny's cheesy garlic lazy potatoes. That's what you made. You made lazy potatoes, you fuck. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of slicing this into fucking eight discs, I'm going to quarter it into four quarters and keep moving. Now, you're, a lot of you are out there thinking to yourselves, you know what, Mike? Um, the man did make all sorts of sides. He made a macaroni and cheese with broccoli in it. Uh, he, he made a... Now, and I should tell you this. Not like old school macaroni and cheese with broccoli he did he's not he's still invited to the picnic as 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 the the people say you know he didn't put raisins in the potato salad or anything he didn't fuck it up that way but um it's like if you're making a baked creamy delicious mac and cheese like people normally eat then you make just mac and cheese but he made a noodle recipe with broccoli and cheese that's what he made it wasn't i don't want to i don't want to really out the guy because again again fabulous cook this perhaps a little lazy by making lazy potatoes. You made you made Lenny Schmidt's lazy potatoes. What the fuck, man? Uh, don't don't because and again he made a million other dishes. As I said, you you got to give him a, a break. The guy made a fucking turkey. He made a, a, a this macaroni concoction I've described. He made gravy that was fucking delicious. He made uh, kugula, which is that's a chore. You ever, you ever fucking let me put it this way? When you um when you make you know the party potatoes and that's i get the man was sick of dealing with potatoes he probably had starchy hands cuz cool you got to shred 10 pounds of potatoes you ever fucking try to do that that that's that's some shit that they made beetle bailey do in a cartoon once like where you're just like oh what would you do punch an officer all right to the brig with you where you can shred potatoes for the next fucking 3 days and you just literally just you you peel potatoes a bunch of them and then you got to shred them with a grater like not a mandolin a fucking grater mandolin's like and you got fucking, you know, and you know what a mandolin would be good for? Scallop fucking potatoes. Oh, or baby party potatoes. Maybe that. Uh, but instead, he's got the grater out. And you got to like, you got to make a pile of, like, if you're making potato pancakes, you guys know this. You're all cooks. You're all chefs. You know what the fuck is going on. So when you make kugula, you got to shred 10 pounds of potatoes. And then it's just that, 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 look, I've done it. All right. It's no fun. I've helped my mom. And, 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 and there's deliciousness ahead. Look, there's, look, if someone says to me, hey, there's deliciousness, ahoy. Well, then I'm in. But I guess I'm going to have to do whatever I can to row and get the boat there as quickly as we all possibly can. I got to raise the sail and, and a vast ye hearties. I got to do all that bullshit because if I'm going to have deliciousness, and if I want to drop anchor on Deliciousness Island, if I want if I want to go ahead and pull up the mast at fucking Deliciousness fucking uh, beach, then I have to go ahead and participate. I have to be. I have to go down and do KP duty, and that's kitchen patrol, baby. It means I got to grab a fucking potato and start shredding the fuck out of it, and then another, and then another. And then a sister and a brother, and tried to kill a man who was a DT undercover. Uh, <laughs> Slick Rick enters my Thanksgiving. All right, so I, I I go there, and again he makes the kugula, which is delicious. He makes all he makes a, a ton of great things. But so I guess I shouldn't give him a hard time. But don't call them party potatoes then. Don't say, hey, I made mom's party potatoes. No, you didn't. You made Lenny's lazy potatoes. You fuck. Uh, still, and I will tell you this: delicious. I like skin on a potato. I don't mind it. 
but but I just it just it, you know I I got bamboozled. That's all. Don't bait and switch me on fucking Thanksgiving dinner. We all know my feelings on this. Sometimes I wake up it smells like Thursday. I'm not a fan of that. I don't want it to smell like fucking Thursday. In my house I cooked meatballs, so it didn't. It just smelled fucking awesome at my house. Then I go to his house and it also smelled awesome. Gravy and turkey and all sorts of stuff. So I thought to myself, all right, we're good. I'm I, I'm wheelhouse. I'm right in the pocket. I'm nestled in right now. You know what? I'm nestled in. This this whole house is like a warm Nutella filled crepe, and I'm I'm fully immersing myself in it, as if it were a jobs pod. You know what it was? It was a uh, it was a turkey pod, a Thanksgiving pod. It was a squanto pod. Let's call it that. It's a fucking squanto pod. That's what they did. They ate the fucking weird looking corn. They killed a fucking goat and a rabbit and whatever the fuck and served it to the pilgrims. And then ten years later, they went, hey. Nice blankets. Thanks, man. This is pretty cool. Is this a payment for the fucking uh, the weird corn we gave you? See, that's the thing. I'm going to say this, Native Americans. We may have stolen your land. We may have come to town and went, hey, what the fuck? Nice country here and got here. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. And then you went, really? Here's some corn pudding and some weird-looking other corn. And we went, oh, weird corn. Now, that's the thing. We were, we were on board with you guys. In the beginning, we showed up and we are like, yeah, this is cool. Indians and pilgrims living together, holding hands forever. But then we went out and we started growing corn, and we got regular corn. We grew fucking yellow corn, and we were like, look at this corn. Our corn is beautiful. Fuck those idiots with the weird corn. And also, they couldn't be bothered to grow the good corn. You know what we thought? This is exactly what happened as pilgrims. And I, by the way, I'm aligning myself with the pilgrims in this story. You guys went ahead and you grew this fucking like, weird corn, and then you grew regular corn, good corn, yellow corn. You went, you know what? These fucking idiots get the bad corn. That's why we were pissed at you. That's why we stole America. That's why we stole your land. Christopher Columbus and the rest of the pilgrims was just like, what the fuck, man? How dare you service this weird corn? And then 10 years later, we were like, fuck these idiots. Let's put a fucking big buckle boot in their ass and take this land and grow good corn. Don't give me the weird corn. I don't want corn that looks like the fucking inside of a hillbilly's mouth with fucking blacked out teeth and all that bullshit. I want clean yellow corn, baby. And we didn't know any better when we first got here. We ate the weird corn because that first Thanksgiving was like, oh, good. There you go. Look at all these dudes. And there's feathers and blankets and all sorts of bullshit. Look at you and your fun dance. We got a picnic table rolling. We got our big fucking hats on. Look at our ladies in their bonnets. And we're just fucking joining hands with you guys. All right, let's do a crazy Alaman left. Let's invent square dancing and eat weird corn. That's the first Thanksgiving. Then we start planting our own corn. We get the good yellow corn. We're like, wait a minute. These motherfuckers, when we showed up, they gave us the weird corn. That's why. You know what? You signed your own death warrant, Indians, by not sharing with us the good corn. I'm sure you had some fucking teepee somewhere filled to the brim with the good corn. And, and, and we were coming, and the first thing you said, you're like, ho, oh, ships ahoy, hide the good corn, ugh. And we were like, what the fuck, man? Ten years later, after we grew the bad, the good corn, we were like, why did they? Because it was, look, it never, we were generously and kindly sharing a land with you, thinking to ourselves, these guys are our friends. We love the fact that they welcomed us. And also, it turned out a bunch of our women looked good in turquoise jewelry. So we're like, all right, this is fucking cool as hell. These guys make the jewelry. We fucking hang out over here. Sometimes they bring over the weird corn, which we didn't know was the weird corn. We just thought it was corn at the time. Then we grew our corn. And we went, holy fuck, we have the good corn. They had the weird corn. And then the musket was invented. And look what the fuck just happened. We came to town. We fucking unloaded on you motherfuckers because you saved all the good corn. Uh, and that's, and look, and that's the story of Thanksgiving. I think we all know that, correct? But see, that's how arrogant you guys were. If, he, if we had to come over and you would have said, hey, guys, want the good corn? First of all, we didn't know what a corn is. We're coming from fucking England and whatever the fuck. Or we're just eating, we're eating like spotted dick. That's all we had to eat. Spotted dick and beans for breakfast. And then you say, hey, how about a vegetable? Like, what the fuck are vegetables? Look at our teeth, man. And you said, aha, we have corn that matches those teeth. And then it was weird because, you know what, when a, when a British guy eats the weird corn, it's like he's making out with a fucking vegetable because it looks like he's like, oh, I'm going to eat this thing that looks like my mouth. Uh, and he just fucking tongues the shit out of it. And you put some fucking mazola on there. You know, and the Indians call it maize. They call it weird maize. I, by the way, I should say that. So we get the weird maize. looks like a hibbly mouth. English guy smiles and he goes, oh, my God, this might be a mirror. Mirrors also were not invented at that point, but it doesn't matter. We fucking smile into it. We're like, look at that. It looks like my smile. I want to kiss it. And then a fucking guy just eats the weird corn. But then, after we grew the good corn, all the pickles were like, hey, wait a minute. I think that weird corn was meant to mock our hillbilly mouths because we came over here and we hadn't invented crest yet. You know what? We sailed over because uh, here's the deal. We sailed over 10 years after. They think the pilgrims invented America or whatever the fuck. You know who sailed over before us? The cavity creeps from crest. They fucking they had an alliance with the goddamn engines. And they went ahead and said, all right, here's what we do. Let's fuck up this corn so it looks like a hillbilly mouth. They're going to be here soon. And the Indians are like, what? We love our land. And they're like, that's okay. I'm sure they're going to be fine. But make sure you give them that corn that looks like their own mouths and maybe it'll transfix them and it did for a decade you fooled us for a fucking decade native americans but then what happened oh sure enough we we've grew the real corn and we went oh 
They mocked us with corn that looked like our crazy guttural hillbilly mouths. And they and our, we were embarrassed in front of our own children, for fuck's sake. And then Miles Standish was like, what the fuck? And he rallied the troops, and they went and they burned your land to the ground. And they, said, and they said, we're sorry about that. And they put out all the fires with these special blankets, and they handed them to you, and they said, here, stay warm without any teepees. And they were like, oh, thanks, man, because it's like Stockholm Syndrome at that point, because we fucked up your land, but then we gave you blankets, and we were like kind of your friend, but not even really your friend. Because, you know, the first thing you remember is, hey, fuck, they fucked up our land. But then the second thing is you go, well, at least they gave us blankets. So now you're kind of still our friend. And then you wrap yourself in those blankets, and then what happens? Oh, the mumps fucking it massacres you. Smallpox and the mumps show up. That's right. It might have just been smallpox, but I say I say the mumps was in there too because we had some diabolical scientists. We were like, hold on. Let's go ahead and throw the mumps in there. Oh, what if we throw the croup in there as well and get their kids coughing and just keeping them awake so they can't sleep? Uh, and then, they, look, you should have seen our weapons program. We were developing the blanket technology because, I mean, initially it was like, hey, what if we just made them itchy? Everybody went, what the fuck is that going to do? I don't know. They'll be scratching them and get invaded in the middle of the night because they'll be scratching themselves with a fucking itchy blanket. Everybody's like, fuck you, man. We got to do something. So then everybody leaped to a nuclear blanket. Like some people like they, in the weapons department went, what if we came up with a blanket? Now, hear us out. What if we came up with a blanket where if they used it, uh, it set a mushroom cloud into the sky and then there was fallout that blacked out the sun for the next 35 years? Do you think that would be a good thing? There would be a, a nuclear winter that would really guarantee that we would get all of this land. And then for the fucking mo of the pilgrims looked and went, all right, idiot. What are we going to do if we block out the sun and we want to take land that's useless now because we can't grow any of the fucking good corn, let alone the weird corn, because then fucking nuclear rain falls and kills everybody. And then the fucking pilgrim Larry was in there. He's just like, ah, oh, yeah, I fucked that up. And they're like, yeah, spread out. He slapped him in the fucking head. And then the Pilgrim Curly took off his Pilgrim Curly hat and went and pretended he was shooting everybody. And it was terrible. Then somebody put a musket to his head and blew it off. But then his head was harder than a musket ball and he was still alive. You know why? Because he was a victim of circumstance. Uh, and then so we came up with the blanket technology and then we fucking came after you guys. And you guys were like, oh, this is cool. Thanks. Because, again, we started with the nuclear blanket. And we started with the itchy blanket, went to the nuclear blanket. We settled on the smallpox blanket. But I think... You probably got some of the early prototypes as well. You probably got just the uh, the minor cold blanket. So some of you guys had smallpox. Some of you were like, I don't know what's wrong with you guys. I mean, my blanket seems to be fine. I might have the sniffles or whatever. But you guys, things look terrible for you guys. What's happening over there? Uh, and then we had, of course, the scabies blanket, which was not a good idea because then the scabies were staying behind on us as well, which we did not care for. The lice-filled blanket. Yeah, look, you ever hear about a flea circus? Where you make fleas do the thing where they jump through the hoops and shit like that. I don't know how they do it, okay? It makes no sense. Well, we tried to do that with the lice. We had a lice circus. We tried to train them to stay on the blankets and, and then bring the blankets to you. We tried to come up with lice who thought only Native American hair was delicious. We thought about it. We went through all the protocols. And, uh, and you know, that's the thing. Everybody thinks you guys were scalping us. Fuck that. We started the scalping because we were trying to get hair for our lice technology for the blankets. We were trying to get lice used to living in Native American hair and then being transported. We weaved, actually wove, if you will. We wove the Indian hair into the blankets themselves so the lice would feel comfortable living inside the blanket. But here's the problem. Lice, they're fucking savages, man. Lice don't fucking give a shit. They're not like, ah, oh, we only like Native American hair. They're like, you know what else we like? Fucking you, hillbilly pilgrim hair. And they would leap into our heads which was furious uh, for everybody because they're like, what the fuck are we going to do now? And then the technology really got out of hand. But then Curly, the fucking pilgrim Curly, he didn't have any hair. So he was the one who stepped up and he went, all right, I'll handle this bullshit. And the lice would jump on him. And all they would do is like spell out words on his head because they didn't have any fucking hair to eat. And he's just like, ha ha, take that, you fucks. And then he would do that. That's why when you watch Curly on the Three Stooges and he fucking hits himself in the forehead and he goes, that's him getting the lice off of his skull. <laughs> So then Pilgrim Curly said, here's a way to fucking work with the lice. And then some of those got fucking stuck. But then we eventually settled on smallpox because it seemed like the thing that would really fuck you up and wouldn't hurt us in any way. And that's the way we like to do things. We wanted to just go ahead and, uh, and take your land uh, and take your great white buffaloes and every other fucking thing that you had and burn your fucking teepees to the ground. And, uh, and then eventually, later on in life, we could give you a, a casino or something because we're terrible people. That's who we are. And I lump myself in. I don't pretend that I'm not involved in this in some way. They called me. They asked me if I wanted to be involved, and I said, not really, but it doesn't matter. My name's on the list. You'll see it. If you go through the, the horrible records of the Indian Nuremberg trials, you'll see my name on there. Why? Because I'm timeless. I, I'm, I've lived forever. I've, I saw all of this happen. You think, you think I'm making this up. Oh, I was there, friends. I ate, I ate the weird cornmeal mush as I came over on the fucking Mayflower. Me and John and Miles and... Tommy and fucking Pilgrim Joe. He was there, too. He fucking showed up. 
and you fucking came with us. We were all there, and our and our ladies, uh, Belinda and and uh, Linda and uh, Bubba Linda. Oh, she's uh, she was a little heavy. All right. So I went to Lenny's, and he made all this food, and it was delicious. It was it was a fine time over there for Thanksgiving. But again, he lied. I did eat some lies. I didn't want to, but I had to eat some lies. They were delicious lies. I look if you make if you feed me lies, and they're delicious, I'll choke them down. Oftentimes, if you feed me lies that aren't delicious, I'll choke them down. I'll get a belly full of lies, whether they're delicious or not. I prefer my lies to be delicious, and Lenny went ahead and took care of that. What else was there? There was the uh, there was nothing green at all. He realized that finally. He's like, hey, man, I didn't make any vegetables except for the broccoli that was hiding in the noodle dish, but it was still delightful. Uh, kugula, stuffing, uh, the fucking, the, the, the lying potatoes that I didn't care for, the potato wedges, Lenny's lazy potato wedges, um, turkey. And uh, gravy, meatballs, uh, it was all there. I got there, there was a charcuterie plate out with some salams, fucking salam out there, and, a, and an onion dip. Lenny made, Lenny made as good as a co- of a cook as he is, Lenny made a fucking box Lipton onion dip. But you know why? Because it tastes like his childhood. Like, I, I totally got it. He he had that out there. He had an art, a special artichoke dip. There was an artichoke hearts. There was, there was a staple from my, chi- my childhood Thanksgiving. When I saw it, I almost wept. I walked in and uh, I had a friend with me and I'm like, oh, dude, look at this. I go, I, I told her this is, uh, this is, this was my childhood at Thanksgiving. This is absolutely my childhood. Uh, there would be the big bowl of black olives. There would be a big bowl of green olives and like charcuterie nonsense. But then, oh, dudes, celery. And now you're like, what's special about celery? First of all, I do love celery on its own. I like the taste. Even though everybody's like, there's no taste to this. In fact, because it's totally true. If you ate nothing but celery, you would die. Because you are not taking in any calories compared to what you're burning. You burn more calories chewing celery than you do swallowing, than you gaining calories swallowing celery. Is this an urban myth? Perhaps. But I bought it, and now I pass it on to you. And now you'll tell it to your children around a campfire someday. Oh, <laughs> flashlight under your chin. And then he ate the celery. And he continued to eat the celery until they only found his bones. Because the celery killed him. Because there are not enough calories in celery to keep you alive. And you burn more chewing the celery. And then there was a knock on the door. And they opened it and they found a hook. With celery! Um, so, celery. Now you're thinking, what's, what's new about celery? I do love plain celery, but this was not just plain celery. This was motherfucking celery stuffed with, brace yourselves, because I don't know if you know this, celery has a groove. Uh, shake your groove thing, celery. Shake your groove thing, shake your groove thing, celery. It is, it is stuffed with cream cheese. Oh, that's right. The Philadelphia sort, if you don't mind. Don't give me some knockoff cream cheese. Don't be that fucking idiot. Don't, don't get Lenny's lazy cream cheese. Get some real fucking cream cheese from goddamn Liberty Bell fucking Philadelphia. I, I don't, it doesn't taste like cream cheese to me unless Rocky ran up some stairs and sweat in it. That's when I want some fucking goddamn cream cheese. It's got to say Philly, baby. It better taste like Mike Schmidt's jockstrap. That's what I fucking want. This better taste, this better taste like a fucking Dr. J slam dunk in the mouth. That's how exactly how I want to fucking handle my Philadelphia business. This better taste like fucking Ben Franklin's burning flesh after the kite hit the key and the fucking electric lightning showed the fuck up. God damn it. That's what I want my cream cheese to taste like. Uh, so cream cheese stuffed in the celery, just, uh, just fill, fill the Kraken, fill McCracken. That's what I want. I want chef Phil McCracken to take the, uh, the goddamn cream cheese and, and cover the inside of the celery, just jam it in the wedge, just fucking, just fucking slide it in there, baby. Just be in a, and be obscene with it. Use a putty scraper. Don't even use a knife. Just go fucking full-on workshop of cream cheese. Just be like a weird-ass elf and just get a putty scraper out of your fucking toolbox and then use that to put the fucking cream cheese in the celery. That'll fucking get me in the goddamn door. Hey, man, we built the celery with tools. We built this celery. We built this celery on rock and fucking roll. <laughs> Who counts the money? Don't, don't. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, don't wear the Jobs pod where you're listening to that song because that's how your heart beats. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Who counts the money? Yeah, I'm Gray Slick and I hate this song. I think I changed the, the melody there. Uh, Mickey Thomas, 
Uh, what a golden voice Mickey Thomas had. Oh, Christ. And I'm sure Grace Slick respected his talent. But then he comes to town with fucking We Built the City, and she's just like, I hate this fucking song, but I need money for drugs. Uh, was Grace Slick a drug person? She was, right? She was around Summer of Love. She sang White Rabbit. Look, I don't give a fuck. Let me tell you this. I don't give a fuck if Grace Slick never touched a drug in her life. The fact that she wrote and sang White Rabbit, she still had to go through fucking Betty Ford Center for six months. The fact that you were anywhere tangentially connected to the creation of White Rabbit makes you an addict. Somehow, some way. So she had to go to the Betty Ford Clinic and dry the fuck out after singing White Rabbit. One girl makes you small and get my hookah, la da do da. All right. And some Nutella crepes for all. Go ask Alice. I think she's at the mall. All right. Um... So, uh, so you get this cream cheese and you just fucking, you get a putty scraper, you get a, you get a jackknife, do that, open up a pocket knife and you, just, you, you fucking cut it off and you just jam it in the fucking, every crease that you can find on the celery. You just make it, it's gotta look filthy. Like I want to, if you're making this, you gotta make it on Pornhub. That's how fucking you're, cause you're shoving big things in small spaces and that's, that's what you should, you know what? I'm going to make that a website. Pornhub should just have that as a name. Fuck Pornhub. Just call it big things in small places. The end. Dot com, dot org, dot edu, dot tv, dot oh, dot edu, I like that. Shoving big things in small places, dot edu. There you go. Somebody hook that up and give me some money. Look, I am giving you guys gold every fucking week. I'm going, here's this, here's that, take this, take that, run with it. Here's an idea that you should have fucking thought of, but you didn't. Ha, look at me, I'm a fucking genius. And then you're like, oh, that's a great idea, Mike. Why don't we fucking do that? Eh. And then nobody ever does anything with it. How dare you guys? You listen to all my ideas. You never create anything, and I don't get any fucking money from it. What the fuck, man? How dare you leave me behind? If Apple creates the jobs pod and doesn't give me a fucking dime, I'm going to be furious. I will come at them. Somebody copyright this fucking show. But yeah, big things shoved into small places. That's how you make this. Just I, I could make this on Pornhub, and I could have a fucking million views in an hour. Just me with my fucking basketball palming hands and my fucking long fingers and I'm taking cream cheese off with a putty scrub and then I'm, I'm pushing it down with the finger to get as much fucking cream cheese as possible packed into every crack of the celery. Oh, yeah. Just see my fucking fingers massaging and manipulating and shoving. And you know, sometimes you got to go two fingers. You got to do that come hither thing. You slide them in and you pull up and you just fuck. Oh, boy, that, that fucking sour cream in there. Oh, sorry, not even fucking cream cheese. I can't go with sour cream. The fuck's wrong with me? I'm now off Pornhub. I'm even off the cooking channel with that recipe. Where the fuck would you put me with that? Holy fuck. I'm on Bing. That's the kind of shit you find on Bing. Fuck Bing. If you Google like fucking sour cream fingers, celery, you'll find me being, duh, here's some outtakes of me fucking things up. But if you go to the fucking real place, the Googles, you go to the Google search engine, you're like, oh, there's Mike cream cheese, fucking two fingers, fucking knuckle deep. Yeah. Fuck yes. Shoving big things in small places and small cracks. Uh, so you take the celery and you just fucking, like I said, a putty scraper, or a fucking a, a, a buoy knife, and you're just fucking sliding all the fucking cream cheese you can into the celery. You don't want to, you don't want to see any green on the inside. You want to pack that motherfucker so it's green and white. That's a New York Jets stick of deliciousness right there, just staring you right in the fucking face. And you're just cramming it full of cream cheese and jamming it right in there. Oh fuck yeah, pack it in like a goddamn C4 fucking charge on a bank wall that you're gonna fucking explode and steal a bunch of shit with your friends. You're just fucking piling it in there. And then when you have an entire brick of cream cheese jammed into one stalk of celery, uh, it takes work, but you can probably do it. You think to yourself, oh, this looks delicious. I could probably choke this down right the fuck now. And you often think, I'll tell you what, it, it turns the best of us into fucking porn stars because you're just like, hey, I could bite this like a normal person, but what if I just throated this? What if I throated this celery stick with a bunch of cream cheese and just fucking, oh, you know what, loosen it all up. Got that fucking, get your spit rolling and fucking loosen up the cream cheese so it breaks up in chunks and you're swallowing it. Oh, God damn, does that sound horrible and sort of delicious and weird. Um... But you fight the temptation because you're not done. I know you think you're done making that appetizer. You're like, oh, celery and cream cheese. It's a fantastic combination. You are. But this is a three-ingredient dish, motherfuckers. You think I'm going to let you off the hook without a hat trick? No. you can't. This isn't just one and two. We're not going to the one and twos. We're going odd. We're going syncopated. We're going jazz. This is jazz. This is a three-beat. You're clapping on the three with this one. You're going to fucking, this is fucking, this is a bitch's brew of an appetizer, motherfuckers. This is the Miles Davis of goddamn vegetable-related appetizers. You're counting on the three, baby. Nobody knows where I'm going. I got to hope the drummer and the bass player keep up with me as I'm just fucking wailing, staring at the floor, not looking at anybody, just being a genius, staring at my shoe tops. Fucking Kurt Cobain and Miles Davis, two dudes who stared at their shoes and made fucking shit happen. So I'm fucking just jamming this cream cheese into the celery. Now it's packed. It's fully packed. You had a celery thing. You know how much does celery weigh? Like a fucking ounce? 
And then you got a full, it's, here's the thing, this is the magic. You get a pound of cream cheese, it's 16 ounces. You get a one ounce of celery. You jam all of that pound of cream cheese into one thing of celery, and it's supposed to be 17 ounces, right? No, it's like dropping feathers in a rock. At the same fucking time, they'll fall. It, this, somehow, you get three pounds out of one stick of celery. I don't even know how the fuck it works. You get one pound of cream cheese, one ounce of celery mixed together, you got three pounds of food. And you're still going to eat the shit out of it. You don't give a fuck. Because again, like I said, celery is easy. Celery is just you chew it. There's no fucking flavor. There's no fucking calories or any of that fuck. Although I, there's a flavor. Like I certainly can detect flavor in celery. Might not be the strongest flavor, but it's still delicious and enhanced by the cream cheese. Now, again, like I said, you think you're done. But no, 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 wheel to make this fucking tricycle go. You need a third to go with the other two thirds to make a hole. So you know what you do? You go to your spice cabinet. Are you thinking to yourself, yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, this is sounds like a sweet treat with the cream cheese, a little tang, almost like a cheesecake. I grab a cinnamon, put that on top. Fuck you. No fucking way. Put the cinnamon back in the cabinet. Ooh, maybe I go a little weird. Maybe I go Middle Eastern. I throw a little Zatar in there. I get a little Zatar, some celery, some... Now, fuck you, man. This is mine. Back off, Zatar. Oh, maybe we go a little Tagarashi. Maybe a little, maybe a little spicy salt from Japan. We go ahead and make this some an international... No, fuck you, man. Let me finish. Certainly, Zatar might work. Tagarashi could take you to the Far East. Maybe the cinnamon is something you want to do because you're a fucking weirdo. I don't know. But here's how I handled it when I was a child. Here's how I handle it as an adult. And here's how I recommend you handle it going forward. You already got a pound of cream cheese in the cell. You already trusted me this far. You've already fucking trusted me this far. You're going to fucking argue with me now? You already got a pound of cream cheese in one stick of celery courtesy of me and my efforts. Now you're going to fucking question my genius? I don't think so. My brilliance will go unchecked, thank you. You go to the motherfucking spice cabinet. If, like me, you have all of your spices arranged alphabetically, you will pass the A's, you will pass the alum, you will pass the bay leaves, you will pass the cumin, you will pass the dill. (laughs) Am I going to make it? You will pass the eucalyptus. You will pass the fennel. You will pass the garam masala. You will pass the oregano. You will pass the... Oh, I'm not going to make it, am I? Because I can't get to P. Who gives a fuck? Scan over the rest of the P's. And you're going to get all the way down to the P's and you're going to grab motherfucking paprika. You got it. Although I will tell you this. If there is oregano in your cabinet, use that. Please, I'm sure it will be delicious. You grab the paprika. Paprika. As red as a naval sunset. And it's, it's just, you just, yeah, you don't have an easy hand with the paprika either. You fucking coat the top. You just sprinkle it. It's, it's got a little spice. It has a taste of Eastern Europe. And yet also the mysterious taste of Portugal. And you taste, <laughs> is that the name of the show? Let me check. Might be. Hold on. Let me write down a time code. <laughs> it could be it. You take the paprika and you just fucking shake it the fuck out, right? You just fucking... I mean, you cover it, you coat it. Remember how I said you take so much cream cheese, you don't see any green inside the crack of the celery. I don't want you to even know that there's cream cheese in this fucking thing. You you put so much paprika on the top. It just it just it looks like a Christmas ornament. You got the green, you got the red. Now, if you look at it from the end, certainly you're going to see the cream cheese, but from the top. If you fly over this appetizer in a helicopter and you look down, you would not know the difference. You would not think there was any cream cheese in it at all. You would think it was just a celery stalk filled with paprika. And you'd think to yourself, how could that be delicious at all? That, could, that doesn't seem to make any sense. But dude, this has, this has every taste sensation. It has every mouth sensation. It, has all, it appeals to all of your senses. The smell. The smell of the wafting paprika takes you to the fucking boat dock in Portugal where it was harvested. Uh, the, t- the 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 sound <laughs> when you, when it's crunched, it's got that crispy celery crunch noise. Oh, that's great. How many other senses are there? Have I covered them all? There's oh the sight, the beauty of it. It's green, it's red. From the side, it's white. 
It's very, very Christmas. You know you want Christmas in your life. You can have it all year round. This is a delicious snack all year round, but especially at the holidays. So that's uh, taste. Oh, the touch. You feel the grooves in the celery. It's cold. And you feel a little bit of loose paprika on your skin. And it's uh, you're like, oh, this is a little grainy. But also it's going to go smoothly with the cream cheese. It's not like you're eating a pile of powder. You're eating cream cheese with some powder on top. So there's the, uh, like I said, there's, oh, and then the smell, like I said, the paprika. And then the sight, the gorgeousness of it. The touch, it feels good. And then there's the uh, the hearing. You get to hear it. You hear it crunch. And then when do you hear it crunch? That's when the, uh, oh, that's when you follow through with the taste. Oh, I can't. It's my childhood in a bite. It's celery packed with cream cheese. Paprika sprinkled on top till you can't even see yourself in the cream cheese anymore. By the way, if you can see yourself in the cream cheese, please take it back to the store. It's probably bad. It's, it's expired. But that's okay. If you cover it with the paprika, you don't have that problem. And you just bite and fucking chew. And it's just, oh, it's glorious. It's so good. It's the crunch of the celery that, and the celery, it, you know, because it's a faint taste of celery, but with the cream cheese it brings out, and there's the tang of the cream cheese, but then the paprika comes in with a little fucking punch. Oh, my God. Simple as fuck. Crazy delicious. Lenny can make lazy potatoes all he wants. He can make a fucking gorgeous turkey. He can make fucking kugula. And he told me, he's like, I fucked up the kugula. I'm like, how the fuck do you, what? what? He goes, I forgot the eggs. I'm like, God damn it. And then he makes the kugula, and it's fucking delicious. It's brilliant. He didn't fuck it up. But it wouldn't have mattered if he fucked up anything. I don't give a fuck if he put his dick in the fucking uh, Lenny's Lazy Potatoes. He made the fucking celery. I walked in the door and I saw it on the table and I was it was a holiday. I it was I, I know that sounds ridiculous. I, I came in I uh with my with my friend, uh my lovely guest, and I was like uh, I said, Oh and I then I explained to her the whole fucking hey, this was my child and here's why and all that shit you just heard me say, I think I probably said to her, and she nodded off at some points because uh you know, that, that stuff is so nostalgic for me. It's just, And it's, I'm at the, look, and look, I'm in the home stretch. There's no, I'm almost dead. All right? There's no doubt. So then you look uh, upon things from your youth or things that you celebrated or things that made you happy when you were younger and you take them and you run with them. And that's why you can make the celery with the fucking cream cheese and the paprika and immediately I'm eight years old and it's fucking beautiful. And then you make mom's party potatoes and you cut them in quarters and I want to fucking hit you in the head with your own cheesy spatula. What the fuck, man? How dare you fuck with my memories? How dare you fuck with my Thanksgiving? How dare you fuck with my nostalgia? This is about me, right? I don't give a fuck about anybody else in here. Well, you know, we've made a new tradition here. We put some garlic in and we quarter because my daughter's like it that way. I don't give a fuck, man. I'm here now. Make them the way I like them. Make them the way I remember them. By the way, here's some meatballs I fucked up. All right, let's eat. <laughs> Idiot. Um, but it, it's it's so funny how that lives inside me. How I'm I'm sad, or I'm I'm not sad, but you're just kind of like, ah, oh, this isn't the way it should be. This isn't the way it was supposed to be. This isn't the way it always is. But people make their own traditions, man. People make things their own way. People change. And again, it wasn't undelicious. It was. It was crazy delicious. It just had a different mouthfeel than, than my mom's potatoes. And yes, I've mentioned Hiawatha, Sitting Bull, Geronimo. None of these guys would have eaten a fucking wedge. They want a disc. But Hiawatha, Squanto, Sitting Bull, Geronimo, they're not at the party, man. Now, am I a surrogate for them? Certainly I'm a surrogate for the greatest Indian chiefs. There can be no doubt about that. But sometimes you got to fucking throttle down and realize there are new traditions to be made. And maybe my nieces like it that way. And my niece deserved all the accolades that she could ever fucking receive because my niece, uh, I will not say her name because she's young and she doesn't want to be involved in this fucking garbage. She, uh, she's a baker by heart at heart. And I think I told you that she'd been asking me about pies and sniffing around what she was going to make. Here's what she made. Um, five fucking pies. She made a uh, she made a pumpkin pie for me because I expressly said, "Oh, it's the holidays. We have pumpkin pie." So she made me a pumpkin pie, and everybody's gonna have some. But it was that was the choice she made for me. She made a pumpkin pie. She made a Reese's peanut butter cup chocolate cream pie. What the fuck? Peanut butter mousse and chocolate with a pile of fucking Reese's cups on top, like all chopped up and die. I mean, dude, dude, it looks like something you get in a fucking store. Pumpkin peanut butter cup pie. Uh, key lime pie, which was kind of a miracle because a lot of key lime pies can be super tart and they'll fuck you up. Hers was tart, but it was also kind of sweet. Like it had the, it had the kind of like a pie, like, you know, how pies are sweet clearly because there's a bunch of sugar in them, but it wasn't cloyingly sweet and it wasn't super tart. It was like the perfect balance. It was fucking amazing. It was so good. 
So we got a we got a pumpkin. We've got a uh, peanut butter cup. We've got a key lime. We've got a Dutch apple, which I also think she made for me because she was going to make an apple pie. I said, apple or Dutch apple? She goes, what's Dutch apple? I go, it's the one with all the crumbling streusel on top. And that's what she fucking made. I mean, I would just eat the fucking streusel. I mean, the apple's good too, but the fucking streusel is killer. And then she made a, uh, a cran cherry pie, which... Dudes, it was beautiful. Like I, I, you know what? I took a photo of all these pies. I think I might post it. Maybe I'll post it in the Joker's page. They were gorgeous. The cran cherry pie had little Christmas trees cut out of puff pastry on top, or pie crust. Oh my God, it was a del- it was just, you know, my niece is fucking eighteen. She's making homemade pies, five homemade pies. What the fuck, man? I, I, you know, clearly making up for all of her father's failures with the pot- <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> Terrible. Um. But damn good. I mean, the pies were amazing. And then uh, my lovely friend who came to town uh, made a special holiday recipe uh, that it was her that meant something to her, something called persimmon pudding. And, uh, and it gets, all right, here's this is funny uh, persimmon pudding. You um, you have to get this. She had to get this persimmon pulp from her like around her hometown, and she had to have to ship to where she lives. And then she made the pudding where she lives, and then she had the pudding shipped to me. So then I could put it in the fridge. It would be here when she arrived. I'm like, all right, that's cool. So she's like, oh, my God, you got to taste this. It's, this is what I always had for Christmas. And I was like, blah, blah, blah. Listen to my celery story. Uh, <laughs> whatever the fuck. Good for you, Christmas. Yeah, pudding. I get it. Persimmons. Holy fuck. Have you heard about the celery? Anybody? Hopefully there's no weird corn in your fucking bullshit persimmon pudding. But I'll tell you what, man. Listen to this fucking celery opus I'm about to spin for you. God damn, is it lovely. So then she gets the persimmon pudding shipped to her house. And it took a while because she had to find a place that would actually ship it. She gets it. And then she makes the persimmon pudding that she tells me she dropped it in the mail. And I said, okay, great. Um, and she said it would arrive on like Tuesday or Wednesday because I was, and, uh, you know, I did the show in the morning Wednesday. And then I was going to go pick her up at the airport. And uh, so I stepped out of the house to go pick her up. And uh, there's a package right there next to my, uh, next to my door. Uh, now I'll tell you this. Um <laughs> The, uh, the package is stacked uh, horizontally against my wall. So I pick it up and I realize I'm like, oh, this thing's kind of bottom heavy. And then I bring it into the kitchen and I open it up and, uh, hey, here's a fun thing. When you ship a pudding, and I know all of you out there right now are considering shipping a pudding for the holidays. If you're shipping a pudding, uh, you need to <laughs> you need to write on the box, preferably, so it can be read by the postman himself. Now, look, I will tell you this. No matter what you write on the box, the postman is going to ignore it. But please know that you've made your best efforts by at least scrawling some sort of ransom note or a help note on the box to see if they will do it. But uh, you have to write, this end up must travel flat. You, you just, you have to put that like fragile, this end up must travel flat, must be stored flat, must be delivered flat. Do not stand it on its end because, because you know, again, you can't write this whole paragraph on the box. You can't say pudding enclosed. Please don't stand on its end because then they'll eat the pudding. Now, you know that. These these guys are maniacs. Amazon drivers, UPS drivers, mailmen, they're starving at holiday season. All they're doing is delivering snacks and cookies, and they realize that. They want to tear open the packages and find it, but they realize they'd get in trouble because they'd open like 10 packages of sweaters before they won one package of candy canes, so they don't even fucking attempt it. But if you say pudding enclosed, they're going to eat the fuck out of that pudding, of course. Oh, it got lost. We don't know what happened. Burp. Uh, so you don't ever tell them there's pudding in there. You just say, uh, caution, you know, rat guts, store flat or whatever the fuck. Earthworms must not be tipped on side. Whatever you say. But she, you know what she wrote on the box? Here's what she wrote on the box. My address. The end. That was it. That's all she wrote. She didn't give them any special instructions. She just sent that package on God's good humor and prayed he would keep her pudding intact. And uh, I can tell you, I don't know, because I told her, I go, they're going to throw these around. That's what they do. I've seen they load package. They whip them into the fucking truck. And uh, and sure enough, the dude delivered it. And even if it survived the ride, it did not survive the the standing up on the end. It's like it's like if you slept on your, upside down on one of those vertical bars, like it all your blood ran to your head. Okay, well, th- in this case, the blood is fucking persimmon pudding, and it ran to the bottom of the box. I open it up and there's fucking goop everywhere because it's she wrapped she triple wrapped it in like fucking cling film and foil and fucking newspaper and shit. And I start to open the box and it's just a fucking mess. And I'm like, all right. So I start to 
I pull it out and it's kind of dripping, and I'm like, oh, I don't know what the fuck to do with this. But I got, and I, I had to go. I had to pick her up at the airport. So I instead I ganked the plate out of the fucking cabinet. And I put it on the plate, and I just said, I'll put it in the fridge. It won't drip, which is fine. And this, if it does, we'll wipe it up. But I couldn't deal with it at that moment in time. And then I get to the airport. I picked her up, and uh, you know, we, were, we we stopped at a uh, grocery store. She wanted a coffee. I had to grab something as well. And um, and then she said, oh yeah, she mentioned pudding, and I went, oh Jesus, yeah, oh I got to tell you this. She looks at me. She's like, what? And then I told her, I go, look, you got to write on a box, fragile. And I her little face, I just saw her. She's just like, oh, 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 makes this sad face. I go, they just, they stored it on its side. So I don't know what it's going to look like. And she's, and so then she's very much like me in that she's like, everything's ruined. All right. Now Thanksgiving is ruined. I screwed that up. I fucked it up. And now I've, I've ruined everything. And I don't know. And I'm just like, no, 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 please. Oh my God. You know, don't. And she didn't rampage like me. Maybe that's what was going on in her head. She didn't betray it other than the look on her face of complete sadness that she had made a mistake. And now, because again, here's the thing, and this is the disease that I have. If I make a mistake, uh, I don't, I, I'm getting better at it, but I mean, my whole life I make a mistake. I'm going to apologize for the next eight hours. Like, and you'll be like, Jesus Christ, shut the fuck up. And I'm like, oh, well, you don't understand, man. I didn't mean to do that. It wasn't an accident. No, no, no. I know. It's fine. Calm down. So she even said, oh, my God, I should have wrote that. You, I go, we had a phone conversation where I said, you got to write fragile and all this stuff. And she's like, oh, my God, I don't even remember that. I was so rushed trying to order the pudding and then the, the persimmons that I had to do the fucking pudding. And, da, 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 and oh, I'm so sorry. I've ruined it. And now maybe we'll just throw it out. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm, I go, I don't even know. It's, it's got to be fine. It's in my fridge. We'll check it out when we get home. Oh, but I don't know if that's supposed to. And I'm like, and she's upset. And I'm trying, I'm the one trying to calm her down. When in reality, I'm the one, I, I want to be calmed down. I, uh, you know what? Pay attention to me. Assuage my feelings. Make sure that I'm okay. Just two people apologizing to each other at a Ralph's for an entire fucking day. So uh, we got home and she she checked it out. She unwrapped it. And we, we put it in some, because she had had it in a foil pan. So we wanted to put it in some separate, uh, we put it in a container to bring over to my brother's house. And we put it in a container to have leave here for us. And uh, I, and she's like, well, you can try it. You got to put Cool Whip on it if you want. And I and I said, well, I'll just try it as is, because I've never had persimmon pudding. And I, you know, I don't know what that is. Persimmon. I like persimmons. You know what I mean. So I just thought it was like me, like a fruit pudding or whatever. Dudes, I fucking tasted it. You ever see that scene in Ratatouille, where the dude eats the fucking ratatouille made by the fucking rat, and then all of a sudden his mom's telling him to go play outside. Dudes, I ate this persimmon pudding, and I was on Santa's lap. I was fucking gorgeous. It was like just fucking like nutmeg and cinnamon and fucking clove. It was just, it was, and, and a little, it felt, it tasted almost like there might have been a tiny hint of ginger in there. And then the persimmon came through and cinnamon. Oh my, f- it was just, it's a Christmas pudding. Like I, I never knew the meaning of the term. You always heard it like, ah, oh, we had a figgy pudding or whatever the fuck. All those idiots in England, huh? Before they sailed over here, like, oh, let's, hey, go, now let's make a Christmas pudding. Because my teeth hurt too much to crunch anything, so let's eat a goddamn pudding. I don't know who's doing that voice. Hey, governor, let's eat a Christmas pudding, we will. How about those persimmons, eh? Uh, but holy fuck, this was a Christmas pudding. Because you think persimmon pudding, you're like, all right, well, this is going to be all tropical. This is going to take like a bounty bar, and Jeffrey Holder's going to come out with a 7-Up and do a dance, and I can see his belly because he's wearing that tied-up shirt. All right, I can handle that for, let's give me, inject a little bit of the islands into my Christmas. Let's do it. But fuck the islands. The only island this was was the island of Misfit Toys. It was fucking delicious as fuck. It tasted just like Christmas, man. It was great. So uh, so the persimmon pudding made it over to their house. And so we got five pies and persimmon pudding. Uh, plenty of desserts. Plenty of, uh, of, of food. Appetizers. Uh, I brought over weird chips. I brought over the General, General Cho's Chinese food chips. They had chicken and a biscuit crackers, which are also my holiday season from a child. Stuffed celery and chicken and a biscuit crackers. Oh, you can't argue with that, right? That's delicious. That's uh, that's the Christmas of the poor. Jarred herring, celery stuffed with cream cheese and paprika, and a pile of chicken and a biscuit crackers. Jesus Christ, that's that's 10-year-old me right there, sitting on a couch, fucking feet dangling, shoving his fat face full of herring and fucking chicken and a biscuit crackers and choking down a goddamn celery thing with cream cheese and paprika. You're not going to find a much happier, younger me unless I was eating those. Cr- you know what? That's like holidays. But if I was watching like like Thanksgiving football, oh, there you go. You work football into the mix. If it's me watching a football game on a Thursday or even watching the, the if it's Christmas, because they used to play, you know what they used to play? The, uh, I think the Sun Bowl used to be on Christmas or the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl. I'm going to say the Sun Bowl. And it would always be some weird team. It would be like BYU playing against Virginia Tech, some matchup you never saw. And I'd just be at my Aunt Rita's house with the white Christmas tree, 
and homemade pierogies in the oven and me just staring at fucking jarred herring, chicken and a biscuit crackers and fucking celery packed with cream cheese and paprika and just, and, and never happier, never happier. Santa brought gifts as a kid. I've talked about it many times. Santa brought some gifts that were unacceptable. Santa brought gifts via cousins. Santa brought me great gifts. Santa brought me weird gifts. Santa brought me gifts that I grabbed at a church for free because they were taking care of poor kids. Uh, but the best thing Santa might have ever brought me was the memory of, of the holiday food that would gather my family together. There'd be, like I said, homemade pierogies and fucking turkey and my aunt's fucking horribles. Uh, oh, my aunt made the worst mashed potatoes of all time. But that's fine because now I, I think of family when I think of them. And I had a family Thanksgiving this year, Lenny and his daughter and me and my lovely friend and, uh, and just the four of us and so much fucking food. We ate, we were eating fucking appetizers. Uh, we ate some meatballs first. Then the food came out. We each had one plate of food. We're like, we're full. I still have, not joking, I have leftovers in my fridge right now that I will eat as soon as this show is over. Uh, I've been eating leftovers since last week. And now it's Friday. It's a week later. And I still have fucking turkey. I haven't had a turkey sandwich yet. I've been, because I've been heating the turkey up with stuffing and kugula and fucking uh, and noodly broccoli and all that. Uh, God, I still got pie in the fridge. And I know I got a list. I got plans. Working out, getting things squared away. Uh, and everybody's like, are you doing that around the holidays? My mom even yelled at me. My mom's like, why are you starting this diet around the holidays? I don't know why my mom's a Muppet, but she was. And uh, eh, it seems like a fucking bad idea. And she, she's not wrong. I tried not to go crazy, but I'm still eating some stuff. And I'm, I, you know, eat one plate of food. I, I, I had a week, man. I had a friend in town. We, we, uh, it's the holidays, man. And and I often give myself excuses to go, ah, oh, man, it's the holidays. Who cares? Ah, oh, man, don't worry about that. Ah, oh, you don't need to eat this. Or you can eat that or eat everything or whatever the fuck. Rest assured, my my mind's in the right place. I got a list. I got plans. Uh, as I've mentioned, it was a six-week thing. Now we've got three weeks left or four weeks left the rest of December. Um, I'm excited about where I'm at this week again. Instead, And, and look, I'm not going to give you a rerun. You don't need a festive best of. Um, w- w- because this became festive, right? And perhaps later on, as we go on in our lives, once we get four or five years down the line, uh, maybe this will be a best of. You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. I cut that off abruptly, didn't I? I because in my brain, I'm like, that seems like a natural ending. But I think I had a thought that I didn't finish. If I did, write me a note. <laughs> you guys can get me at Mike and Mike. You know, so I'm saying there's no rerun. That's the point. I'm not going to attach any fucking... This is fine. There's no, no need for new content on here. There's no need for me to attach an old school show. We're already... We've, we've, we've hit our... Because I, I glanced now at the... Holy shit. I didn't realize it was that long. Well, I guess when you talk about squanto and celery for fucking 45 minutes, you're going to fill out a show, right? Uh, you guys can get me at Mike and Mike comedy.com. You guys can find me at facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. Friend me. Don't just find me there. What the fuck? Who finds me and goes, there he is. I'm not Waldo. Fucking friend me, you dick. Uh, Facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. And then, of course, there's twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can find me and follow me there. Find me, friend me, follow me. Fuck me. Yeah. All right. Fucking ride me. Uh, that seems aggressive. All right. So again, friend me at facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. Follow me at twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. I'm in all those places. Also, I'm at Instagram and Snapchat. Yes, I am. Mike four zero Y O B. That's Mike four zero Y O B. Find me on those places and follow me and send me a note. You know what? It's Friday. I will send out a Snapchat thing today. Just, it'll only be, it'll just be me talking. Nobody gives a fuck about anything else. It'll just be me talking. But, um, but yeah, so there you go. Find me at Instagram and Snapchat. Uh, I'm there. I posted, a, I went to a matinee last week and I posted a photo from there. Oh, I love matinees. It's fun to go to the movies in the afternoon. Really? It is. I usually go super late at night, but to walk outside and it's still light outside. Ah, oh, I tell you, I look, I'm a man who doesn't need much. <laughs> What's celery? Eight cents. Cream cheese is like a buck 80 fucking paprika. I don't know what the fuck that costs. Matinee movie, 12 bucks. Sunshine, smell of popcorn. I'm, I'm easy to please. I don't need a fucking billion dollars. Uh, all of those things exist. So please go ahead and find me at all of those places. Ryan Dirks is our cool guy friend who does our web work. Find him at facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. Send him a note. Tell him you love him. And of course, David Mex Hernandez does all of the cool ass stuff for this show. He does all the artwork. He does all of the, uh, the, the fun music that we have involved in this show. Go ahead and check him out. He's the best. He's at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Now, I guess, all right, he's, uh, 
you know, I like the cadence of saying certain things here, but he doesn't like it. Uh, he doesn't. I, I, I guess I'm giving wrong information, and that's not good. I shouldn't be giving wrong information. I'm giving wrong names of people, wrong names of, of characters. I'm giving wrong web addresses or at least saying things are there that aren't. So we'll just uh, we'll clean it up. So David Hernandez, you can find him at facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. Um, he does all of his artwork there. It's got it's stored in the photos. Become his friend. And then you can look at his photos there. He does artwork for this show. Uh, and it's all cool and really amazing. If you join the West Side 86 Jokers, which is the fan club for the show, you'll see a bunch of Joker stuff that he's done for this show in the past. If you become his friend at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez, you can go ahead and check out his artwork at his uh, photo place, and you'll see that he's got all the photos there, the artwork that he's done for me in the past. And also, he has a closed group, and I believe the name of it is This Is Dumb, That's Dumb, You're Dumb, I'm Dumb. And you can join the closed group by sending him a note. He, uh, he will then respond with three questions. You need to reply to those three questions, and then he will allow you into the group if you apply or reply uh, in, the, in the positive or the uh, in the reply in the – what's the word? Reply in the positive. No, it's not in the positive. What is the fucking word? I can't uh, – I'm an old man. My brain is fucking bottoming out. I tried to do a clean promo here. Uh, sorry, Max. I, I, I fucked it up even now. Um – Reply in the affirmative. There you go. If you reply in the affirmative to the questions, he will allow you to come into the group. The group is called This Is Dumb, That's Dumb, You're Dumb, I'm Dumb. Uh, it features a lot of artwork and characters that he's created. You go ahead and find them there. Uh, one of them is made of meat. I don't know. I keep screwing up the names. So I'm not going to say the names anymore. There's a, another very attractive lady. There's a uh, Christopher Hitchens who looks like an owl. They're all there. Please join, and then you will get to see these characters and learn their names for yourself. Uh, and then you can also visit his website. And on his website, you will see examples of his professional artwork from the past. And go ahead and check it out. Uh, you will not see his Valscapes anywhere. You will not see his Gaikons anywhere. Um, I keep telling people that. And then uh, our friends, you know, listeners were like, where are they? And then Max is like, they're not, they're not there. Mike keeps telling people, even though we've had many conversations. Um, so I don't, I don't recall those many conversations, but that's fine. Uh, I, I want to make sure that everybody sees the things that they're going to see. So you will not see Valscapes. You will not see Gaikons. But if you go to artbydmh.com, you will check out his website, a very professional website, which will give you an idea of the professional artwork he has done in the past. And then you go to facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez, and you'll see all the cool ass art animation painting he's created. And, uh, as I mentioned, there are characters involved on the, this is, that's, this is dumb. That's dumb. You're dumb. I'm dumb page. And, uh, people share memes. People, uh, it's just a closed group of people, of like-minded people who are having fun and, uh, and experiencing mechs and his characters. So go ahead and uh, join. Uh, send him a note, and he will send you three questions, three, and you will answer them, and you will talk about swallows and things like that. And please go to his website, just because I think his website is great. There you go. There's nothing there to see that I kind of quit plugging that. You'll see examples of stuff he's done in the past. That's all I know. So go to his website, artbydmh.com. That's A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H. Dot com. Hey, Louie, could you come over here for a second? I need you to help. All right, what are you doing? Well, I've been helping Schmitty with ideas for making his podcast even better. Yeah. And I thought maybe I could, like, jazz up his theme song by, you know, adding some lyrics to it. Seriously? Yeah, so far, so good. The only problem is I keep getting stuck at the bridge. So I was wondering... All right, all right, could... all right. Just play me what you got so far, and when you get to the bridge, I'm just going to jump in with something, okay? Okay. Here we go. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. One, two, three, four. The 40 year old boy, the 40 year old boy, the 40 year old boy's about to start. That's catchy. The 40 year old boy, the 40 year old boy, the 40 year old boy's about to start. You know, he's gonna say fuck a lot. He will probably mention his cock. He is gonna say lit. To Rudley and drop a royal family. Yeah. The forty-year-old boy. The forty-year-old boy. The, the four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good, Louie. Can I use it? Oh, go right ahead. Great. Now I can finish. Just one more thing, though. Um, do you know anything that rhymes with saddle vag? Sponsors. We have them. That we do. Uh, a couple of friends, actually, and they're good people, and they and they're throwing me a bone. They're not, you know, they don't sponsor the show because they're like, oh yeah, we're hardcore businessmen. No man, I think they like my show and they like supporting it. And in in kind, I like their shows and I want to support them as well. I like them as people more than I like their shows. I'm not gonna lie to you. The shows are hit or miss. <laughs> what if I was that guy? Um, no, of course we have the fabulous fearful Jesuit who does amazing things with his Paranoid Strain podcast, available right now in the iTunes store. Go ahead and check it out. Leave a review if you would. Write our friend Fearful Jesuit a note. ParanoidStrain at gmail.com. ParanoidStrain at gmail.com. Write him a note and say, hey, dude, 
We love the show. Mike turned us on to it. Uh, of course, the show right now is about the uh, the terrible anti-vaxxers and how they should be driven from our land. We should get a Irish uh, person with a flute to play it and then drive them all out of uh, Blarney or whatever the fuck. Uh, like he'll steal your children in the night. If there was a way that, oh, we could find a, a pied piper, a pied piper to play a, uh, a bassoon or, a, or an oboe and then take all of the anti-vaxxers and have them walk off a cliff. Wouldn't that be grand? Because uh, that's what happened with the right. Didn't the pied piper steal rats first and then kids? He's a bad guy. I mean, he's good in the beginning because he takes the rats, then later on he takes because he wants all the money. Look, it's a parable about greed and capitalism. If you can't fucking see that, man, then take your own flute and play your own self off a fucking cliff. Uh, but please bring some anti-vaxxers with you because those people are dangerous and need to get the fuck out of here. Everybody's dangerous now, right? Everybody with their fucking attitudes, they all think they're smart. Um, it's not even that they think they're smart. They're mad at smart people. And they're like, ah, my dumbness will qualify. If we get three dumb people, they're as smart as one smart person. So why don't we, you know, because three dumb people, certainly we can all grab rocks and kill the smart person. And then look, we're all smart now. Yay. And I feel like that's an Aesop's fable or something, right? The story of like the the... The three gorillas and, a, and an owl, right? Three gorillas show up, and they're like, hey, man, we're stupid. And the owl's like, I'm fucking smart, man. Get the fuck out of here. They're like, fuck you, owl. And then they beat him to death with branches. They're like, no, we're smart like the owl. And they wear his tiny owl glasses, and they eat a fucking Tootsie Pop, and everybody's happy. Except us, because all the dead owls don't fucking have any wisdom, and now we got to listen to gorillas for the rest of our life. That's fucking terrible. Nobody wants that. Get the gorillas out of charge. Fuck you, gorillas. Coming in, beating your chests. I'm smart because I'm brawny and strong. Fuck you. Look at this pack of owls. And also, I'll tell you what. One owl, you can sneak up on them with three gorillas and beat the shit out of them with tree branches. Fine. But if you get a fucking flock of owls, death from on high, they come hooing out of the fucking branches and fuck up three gorillas. That's what I want. I want an army of owls to take out. You know, earlier I wanted chimps. I wanted chimps who would fuck up rats, which is fine. I think that's true. But now I go the other way. If my monkeys rebel against me, I need to have a fucking passel of owls on call who can take out these monkeys and do my bidding. I need a screeching barn hooter to come up and fucking tear out a chimp's eyes if he looks at me cross-eyed. You want a piece of me, monkey? Deal with my army of flying owls. Uh, these fucking hooers are going to come down and fucking carve you up with their crazy-ass claws and their glowing eyes in the night, their big hooky beaks. You don't want any piece of these owls. Fuck you, gorillas. That's the problem. This world is full of gorillas who think they're fucking awesome and all the owls are fucking bailing. And also, I don't know if you heard this, there's unrest in the forest. Yeah, there's fucking trouble with the trees. Apparently the maples want more sunlight, but the oaks ignore their pleas. What the fuck is that all about, maples? You come in whining, and then the oaks are just like, because like, the oaks can, hey, look, they could share, but no, the oaks are like, ah, we totally like all the sun. I'll tell you, the problem with the maples all right, never mind. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I want owls to kill gorillas. But uh, none of that has really anything to do with our good friend Fearful Jesuit and his show. Although maybe he'll do a show about that. Uh, the, the, the smart owls being overrun by the dumb gorillas and what it fucking did to our planet. Uh, either way, you should download his show. It's at the iTunes store right now. Go ahead and grab it. It's uh, The Paranoid Strain. Leave a review in the iTunes, iTunes store talking about how great it is. Write him a note. Tell him how great he is. Listen to all the episodes, not just the newest one. And I will tell you this, I got a sneak preview of the new one. Oh, folks, your holidays are going to be unbelievably complex. You're going to you're going to be you're going to be swimming in some fearful Jesuit fucking knowledge. It's coming your way, buddy. You think you're going to unwrap it Christmas morning? I think you're getting it earlier than Christmas morning, but I'll tell you what, even if you get it on December 10th, uh which is that's even too close. If you get it December, I'll say 12th. If you get it December 12th, uh and you start it. Say you get it December 12th at noon and you hit play, Oh, that's going to take you right into Christmas Eve, friend. That's going to take you right up. To, that's going to butt up right against, right against midnight Christmas Eve night because this is this is a file. You think I do long shows? Jesus, fuck. Is, and it's crammed full of everything you need to know. That's the thing. I have wasted seconds. I'm talking about Squanto and shit like that. He's got all sorts of cool ass shit he's telling you. It's all knowledge you can take. He's turning you into owls, folks. If you're a gorilla and you want to be an owl, listen to this fucking show. The Paranoid Strain, available right now on the iTunes store. New one coming soon. Anti-vaxxers up now. And then listen to all the episodes from the past because they're fucking worth it. Check it out. Uh, and then our other sponsor. Now get this. I think I've been doing this sponsor a disservice. And he's very nice because he doesn't correct me, but he should. Uh, but this is an episode of a podcast. This is an episode. This is a podcast called The Knife Drop. Okay? It's a fantastic uh, podcast. So hosted by our good friend Rob Matsushita. Uh, brought to you by Mill Creek Entertainment and the Movie Spree Streaming Service. Uh, they talk about all sorts of pop culture stuff, film and TV mainstream stuff. Uh, they got Terror Tuesday. You got uh, on-location updates from the horrible Big Slim McGroovy, who I'm sure is lovely and talented, but for me, just a name. 
Uh, you can get that. Now, here's the thing. I keep telling people to go to the iTunes store and get it. I'm not sure if you can get this in the iTunes store. So I'm going to tell you for sure. Here's where you can get it. You can get it at Stitcher. Okay. I believe you can also get it at Anchor. Uh, but Stitcher.com, you can find the podcast of The Knife Drop and, uh, and all the archives, certainly. Um, you can get the, uh, I think you can go to Anchor.fm and get the podcast The Knife Drop. Uh, so Stitcher and that, and I think it's also, I believe it's on Podbay and Spotify. So let's do that. Let's say Podbay, Spotify, Stitcher, and uh, and Anchor. That's where you can find the Knife Drop podcast from our friend Rob Matsushita. And uh, as a matter of fact, you know this is a good time to get into it because episode seven has just dropped. Not unlike a knife in the title of the podcast. Uh, they talk about joysticks, which is a video game inspired sex comedy from the early eighties. Uh, and and it's a, that's a new segment called TNA Q and A. He he loves his cutesy segment titles. Uh, you'll get more of the ad interview with uh, Christopher Chen about stereotypes breaking into Hollywood. Uh, there's a Terror Tuesday segment about a, sh- a movie called Dead Night. It's all out there, man. Uh, it just dropped a couple of days ago, as a matter of fact. Episode seven of the Knife Drop podcast is available right now in Stitcher, Podbay, Anchor, Spotify. And, uh, and who the fuck knows? A car might drive by your house playing it as well because it's getting very popular. So go ahead and check it out. Our buddy Rob Matsushita, the Knife Drop Podcast. Uh, episode 7 is available now. The other six are available as well at Stitcher, Podbay, Anchor. Uh, I wouldn't go to the iTunes store yet because I'll be honest with you. I went to the iTunes store to download it and I didn't see it. Maybe then I went to try to look at my correspondence with Rob. I'm Look, I'm an incomplete sponsor person and he's very nice to tolerate me and you all are. Um, but I'm assuming you should go to Anchor. Spotify and Stitcher and Podbay. If you want to find the Knife Drop podcast by our good friend Rob Matsushita, uh, brought to you, of course, by Mill Creek Entertainment. And uh, what was the other company? There's some other, what is it? Uh, uh, a streaming service, Movie movie Fee, Movie Spree, Movie Spree, that's who it is. So go ahead and check it out. Rob Matsushita's Knife Drop podcast. He sponsors this show. So I want you to know all about him because he's been with this show from the beginning, man. I've, I've been on a, one of his other podcasts. I've done a, he used to do a, a web series called Chapel. I contributed a voice to that, which quite frankly, I don't think I was very good at, but he was very nice to include me anyway with what I had sent. Uh, and he's the best. Rob's our friend. Rob and Fearful Jesuit. Good guys who want to support this show. So I want to make sure you go ahead and support theirs. Thank you guys for that. Uh, who wants to drive for Uber and Lyft? Is it you? Is it you? Uh, it, these exist. And also, it's funny, Uber Uber has changed another thing in California now. This made me laugh. Uh, they're like, we are your friend drivers. Please don't hate us. So now uh, they've come up with a thing where they tell you how much you're going to make from every ride. And you can choose whether or not to accept it or not. It's so funny. Like they're They're incrementally making these changes that everybody wants and going, how about this? Well, how about this? Well, does this make you shut up and stop talking to the press? Will this make you stop signing petitions to put us out of business? What about this? Uh, so they have a new thing in California where like, it'll pop, the ride will pop up and it'll tell you where you're going and how much it is if you accept it. And you can decline it. And you will not be penalized for declining rides anymore, they say. But I can almost guarantee if you turn down three rides in a row, they're going to be like, oh, this guy doesn't want to ride. So you won't get a ping for another hour. I mean, that's just how it works. They can pretend because they won't, but they won't show anybody the fucking inner workings of the algorithm or all that bullshit. So I don't trust these fucking guys as far as I could throw a Zuckerberg. Seriously, Ubers, they're all the cut of the same fucking cloth, these dicks. Uh, but I encourage you to please work for their company and make me money. All right, here's the thing. If you want to be a, a rider, a first-time rider for Lyft, use the code Mike720057. That's M-I-K-E-720057. Go with the all caps. I think it's a good look. Mike720057 for Lyft. That's if you want to be a first-time rider, and then I get a ride, which is stupid. But if you want to start driving for Lyft, use my code, and then after you complete a certain amount of rides, I'll get a pile of cash, which helps me out this holiday season. Thank you for thinking of me. Uber, the same thing. You'd use the code DJZW1YTTUE. That's DJZW, the number one. Y T T U E. And I think, I, I think, I think you should use that as a first time rider and get me an Uber ride because that's great. But mainly as an Uber driver, you want to do that again, I'll get a spiff, a little pile, a little boom, boom, a little bonus, depending on how many rides you complete and how many time uh, frames they give you. It's, it's this weird thing. It's like you get to do 100 rides in a month, which believe it or not, sounds like a lot, but it really isn't. If you work like four weekends in a row, you'll have 100 rides. I mean, if you work, if you drive, you know, it depends. I, like I said, I drive Friday, Saturdays mainly. I, I try to do that. It's raining today. God, I don't want to drive today because driving in the fucking rain is a nightmare. Because also, 
You're letting a hundred rainy people get in your fucking car. And then it's like your car just smells like a fucking dog bath. Oh, what a mess. Uh, but I, uh, but uh, you'll love it. You'll love the company and you want to make me money by driving for them, don't you? Uber, DJZW1YTTUE, Lyft, MIKE720057, Mike720057. Go ahead and use those codes and that would help me out tremendously, immeasurably, unbelievably, I say. I mentioned to you I have a plan. I got a list. I got plans. Uh, and part of that is putting together my mailing list. Now, I will tell you this. If you have sent me your information already, I have placed you on the mailing list proper, but I have not sent out a mailing list yet. I'm waiting to get a certain amount of people. Not really. I mean, I'm just, yeah, no, really. I'm trying to get up to a certain amount, and then I'll send out the amount. I'm close. We're getting close. So if you want to be on my mailing list, go ahead and send me a note. Hey, Mike, add me at gmail.com. Hey, Mike, add me at gmail.com. Send me a note that I'll, I'll put you right on the mailing list. Um, I was looking at launching the newsletter with the new year. Uh, perhaps there'll be a test one that goes out before that, maybe a couple. But I'm I'm planning on launching the actual newsletter the beginning of January. And then that'll be a, I don't think it'll be, a, I don't think it'll be bi-weekly. It'll be weekly. You'll get one every time the, the podcast comes out, certainly. So, so go ahead and sign up. Send me a note. That was weird. I like hiccuped, but it didn't hiccup. Uh, hey, Mike, add me at gmail.com. I'll throw you right on the list. And then we'll get, uh, once you get, like I said, I'll send out a test list, certainly because I have to build the template and things like that. But, um, but if you would do that, that would be great. Go ahead and sign up for the list and you'll get on the mailing list that I can keep you abreast of things that are happening in 2020 because things are happening. I got, I got a list. I got plans as you know. Uh, so please join me on our mailing list. And also I have a YouTube channel. Did you know that? Yeah. Cause that's going to be active coming up soon with more activity and things, uh, youtube.com slash, uh, Mike four O Y O B or the 40 year old boy. I can't remember. Just go Google YouTube 40 year old boy and you'll find me. And then you follow the channel and you'll never have to fucking look it up again. That's great. Go ahead and follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I would appreciate it very much. There's some stuff on there now you can check out if you haven't checked it out. And then this podcast goes up all the time. You can go ahead and re-listen to it there. Oh, to your heart's content. If you want to listen to it in your house, if you don't want to jam monkey cum drips into your ears, you want to just listen to it at a desk, then that's fantastic. If you don't want to get your skull spit roasted by a couple of gibbons, and you want to just kind of go ahead and listen to this on your laptop like a gentleman or a, or a lady, then go ahead and do that at the YouTube channel and Google it with my name and you'll find me, I promise. Uh, I have a Twitch channel as well, twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. I'm over there playing video games. We were playing Red Dead Redemption 2, but we're going to be playing some Spider Man soon. We're going to be playing some more. Uh, I've got Assassin's Creed where I'm a Spartan. I'm going to dress in a loincloth and kick a guy in the chest. That's going to be fun. Uh, and then I'll even play the game. Ho, ho, look at me making jokes about me. Follow me at the Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. I'm on there all the time playing games. I'll be there this afternoon, as a matter of fact. But you don't care. It's not like you're going to listen to this and jump over there to see me there. Perhaps you will. Who knows? I don't know how you live your life. But please do that. Please come see me at Twitch. Follow and subscribe to the channel. That would be great. It helps me out immeasurably. Again, as I've said, uh, it's fun having your own TV network. Now I just need to realize that people need to know when I'm going to be on at all times and have a set schedule. Nobody put friends on at 1 in the afternoon. Uh, But it's all coming. List, plans, repeat lather, rinse, all that shit. So please go ahead and join me at the Twitch channel. I'd appreciate it very much. Um... Amazon, we've got an Amazon link. Oh, well, hold on. Let's talk about this first. Did you know I'm on Cameo? I am. That's right. You can hire me to call you or call a friend. Right now, I've got one active request that I'll be, I'll be covering today, this Friday. I'll be sending it out. I, don't want to, I can't tell you the story about it because then the person will know because uh, I can't. Whatever. It's a long story. I'll tell you next week. But, uh, but I never want to do it because if someone listens to the show here before they get my Cameo, then they're like, oh, I saw this coming. That would uh, suck, quite frankly. But um, but now I tell you that this exists and Cameo exists. It's an app on your phone. You can hire me to say Merry Christmas to your friends uh, or Happy Hanukkah to your enemies. Or maybe I say Happy Hanukkah to your friends and Merry Christmas to your enemies. Who the fuck knows how you do things? I'll do it. I'll say whatever the fuck you want me to say for $15 because that's what it's come to. <laughs> Mike Schmidt on the Cameo app because that's what it's come to. Hire me to call your friends and tell them they're great or that you don't like them or but I prefer to tell them they're great. But I mean, I can do whatever the fuck you want. Again, $15 is 15 fucking dollars, man. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tape it in my apartment because that's always fun. People want to see where I live. I'll take, I'll take about a tour of my house with the house hunters. See if they can uh, buy this apartment and flip it. You got any, you got any relatives flipping houses? Let's have them buy my apartment complex. I'll call them and I'll ask them if they can do it. 
I'll ask all sorts of personal questions. I love this exchange. So please hire me on Cameo. I need $15 because this is what it's come to. This is what it has come to. Click, 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 click. Um, oh, SoFi. Let's talk about that for a second. You know, there's this thing called SoFi. <laughs> Uh, it's a cool ash money, a uh, cool ash, cool cash, cool ass money cash app. If you use my referral code, I will get some money and that will be great. You will also get money. It's $25 now. It's down to 25 bucks. Uh, I get 25, you get 25. We're all happy. So use my code. Do I have the code to give you now? No, because it's a long ass fucking code, but you can find it at the Westside 86 Jokers page. Click on that and then go ahead and sign up. And you'll get your money. Other people who sign up, they all got their money. Everybody took their money out. Everything's fine. Now, I will tell you this. If you really want to bump it up, they have a money market thing right now that if you put $1,000 in using my code, they, uh, they'll give me $100 and give you $100. Do you want $100? And then you can just take the money out. Once you get your $100, you can actually take the money out. Seriously. It's not, you don't need to leave it in there. I'm not kidding. This is not a scam. And I'll get $100. Now, I don't know if you got $1,000 laying around. You want to put it into a SoFi investment thing. I know I don't. Uh, but if you did, you'd get $100, and so would I. Uh, contact me for further details. Perhaps I'll put that link up on the fucking thing. I think I don't have to use the same link. Or uh, or I got to generate a new link. I don't know. All the SoFi links. What the fuck? But you know what? It made me some money. Uh, I had a handful of you guys do it, which was nice. And even a handful was great. Although I wish more of you would have done it. That would have been fun. But that's okay, man. Maybe more of you have $1,000 than you have $100. I, I don't know. And you were more, you're more happy putting that in there. Because there's no risk. Again, you put it in for fucking eight days. Then you take your $1,100 out. You make 100 bucks. It's fucking gorgeous. I also get 100 Do it now. Shut up. Uh, we got a Patreon. You can go ahead and become a member of that. Uh, become a Patreon patron. And again, I got a list. I got plans. The new year is going to be bringing updates on there as well. All sorts of updates all over the goddamn place. Look at me just vomiting updates all over you as a fucking crew. But join the Patreon. Go ahead and Google Patreon and Mike Schmidt. Or uh, I think it's patreon.com slash Mike40YOB. And you'll see my smiling head there and you'll become a fucking patron. And I would certainly appreciate that very much. Thank you so much for thinking of me, everybody who is a patron at Patreon. It truly helps, especially around the holidays. You know what else helps around the holidays? That was a bad sentence. You know what else helps around the holidays? Well, yes, it's the Amazon link. If you go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com and you go to the merchandise page, which we all know is the Joe Business page, uh, there will be an Amazon link just lurking there. You click on that and you do your holiday shopping. It helps me out tremendously. We get money, they get money, you get stuff. It is a perfect relationship. It is all three of us helping one another. We're all, it's as if you, me, and Amazon were a human centipede. And, uh, and you know, uh, you're in the front. You, you don't, you got nothing. You got no anuses sewn to your mouth. Absolutely not. You, uh, you ingest products at Amazon. Well, I guess Amazon gives you the products and I'm at the, I, am I at the rear of this? I don't even get a mouth on my anus. That's not good. Um, no, Amazon gives me money. So you buy stuff from Amazon, which means your mouth is on their anus. And then I get that money, uh, from, I get a taste of that money from Amazon. So... Is their mouth on my anus? No, their mouth is on my mouth. Oh, I'm fucking up this human centipede in a bad way. Look, if you want to somehow put your mouth on Amazon's anus, and then you'll get products, and you're giving them money as well too, though, and then I'm getting money from them, but no product. So is my mouth on your anus? I don't fucking know. Look, this works. At some point, it works. We get money, they get money, you get stuff. It's a, it's a human centipede of love for Christmas with a whole pile full of products and money and anuses and spiffs and referrals and Bezoses and me and you and, and, and uh, we're having fun. Everybody's anusing everybody and we're all spending money and making Christmas special for all of us. Whoever you're buying products for, I'm getting a spiff. Bezos stays rich. Everybody's happy. We get money, they get money, you get stuff. Use my Amazon link. Go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com. Go to the merchandise page. Click on the Amazon link and now you're shopping. Costs you nothing. Completely free. You're in there doing stuff and I just get a taste of it. God damn, make this work. What's wrong with you? What are you waiting for? What the hell? I, I, I swear to God, there was something else I was going to fucking tell. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Remember I was talking earlier about Apple? <laughs> and I was like, they're trying to make it hard. And I said, they, like, I don't own iTunes anymore. I don't own the music and they're fucking killing iTunes. They got Apple music and all this bullshit. And I never, I don't know what I own and what I don't own anymore. And then I talked about, then I parodied, you know, spun off in a fucking Microsoft and Word and I don't own that. Well, here was the whole fucking reason I thought of this. Because one day this is going to become an issue, and I don't want it to be an issue, but it's going to become a fucking issue, and I, I, I'll have to deal with it then. Uh, Apple wants me to update my, my Mac 
Okay, because right now, let me let's let's look at about this Mac. What do I have? I have Mojave Mac OS Mojave, but it wants me to update to something called Catalina, which is the new fucking operating system. Fine, but dudes, get this. I, I'm thankfully I googled it before I did it because something you ever do this? You ever update your phone? Your phone's bricked. You're like, what the fuck just happened, man? And like, oh yeah, no, you're not supposed to do it on Thursday mornings. You know what I mean? Because it just fucks everything up, and all your pictures are gone. You're like, god damn it, you jagoffs. Because technology is your friend, but also at the same time. You know, technology is, is uh, it's magic, okay? But sometimes it's the magician who pulls the tablecloth off and leaves the dishes standing. And other times it's the fucking mu- magician who pulls the tablecloth off and all the dishes hit the fucking floor. And now you're fucked and you got to spend six hours on a phone with customer service. And that's terrible because you can't put together plates and shit. Once China is smashed, it's smashed. Smashed. Can't even talk. I'm so mad at you guys, I can't even talk. It's got a woik. Uh... So I Google this to see if there's anything that's going to brick on my Mac, right? Because I got iTunes because I don't know. I'm I'm resisting. I don't want my iTunes to go away because I have like fucking 100 gigs of music in there, man. I don't want to fucking lose that. Even though I have Spotify now, I have all this other stuff that I bought, paid for, owned, ripped. I don't want to lose it. And I know that's old people talk. That's like, that's me. That's my blinking VCR clock. I'm sure I could figure out uh, it out. There's some other way I could fucking go about it. But for me, it just terrifies me that I'm going to lose all my fucking music. I don't want it to happen. I think we've dealt with this in years past, where I've lost an iPod, and I've had transferred systems over, and I lost all my music. I was like, what the fuck? And then I found it, and dude, fuck that. I don't, I don't want mystery. I just want my fucking music. But then I was checking to see if I was going to lose my fucking music, and get this. I Googled fucking OS, Mac, Catalina, whatever the fuck, Mojave. And uh, every time I go to record this podcast, you know, I open Audacity. And I always get a box that says, Audacity is not updated to work with Mac. You need to, you need to fucking improve it or whatever the fuck. So I, just, I hit OK all the time because you know why? All I want is Audacity open so I can start talking into a goddamn podcast. That's it. I just want to bring you a fucking show. So sure enough, I open it and it's there in the box and I click it. So then I get told I got to update my computer and it keeps, it keeps reminding me. And then it keeps saying, we will automatically redo it in the morning. I'm like, no, no, fuck you. I, remind me tomorrow. Remind me tomorrow. Don't fucking automatically do anything. And here's the thing. I Google it, and it turns out, fucking, I go to Audacity's website. Audacity will not work with OS Catalina. It, it only works with fucking OS. Right? I mean, it's, it's working with Mojave, but once I update to Catalina, it'll be gone. Because they, I, I, the only thing I can think is Mac is trying to make you extremely dependent on Mac, and I will only be able to use GarageBand to record podcasts at that point. And it's funny, I said that to Max, and Max is just like, well, uh, GarageBand's easier. I'm like, it's really not. I mean, I, I literally push a button, and I'm talking here, and I know how to use Audacity because I have familiar, familiarity with it. He loves GarageBand because that's what he builds everything in. He knows GarageBand. Well, I know Audacity. To, and he's like, it's easy to learn GarageBand. And, I, and look, I'm sure it is. But again, I, I, I got this. I got, I got audacity. You know what I mean? It's that thing where it's like, uh, it was like I, when the Brady Bunch had Alice as their fucking maid, and then she bailed. She left. She wanted to get new things or whatever. And they hired a new chick, and her name was Kay. And it was the mom from Family. And she was very reserved. And like then the girls are coming in, and they're like, can we put makeup on you and do facials like we did with Alice? The fucking maid would go, I'm not Alice. I'm Kay. And the boys would go, hey, let's go outside and throw the football around. You know, Alice knew a whole bunch of fucking football plays. It was awesome. She was kind of a butch lesbian, but that was fine with us. We didn't give a shit. She threw the football around. Yay, come on. And then she'd go, I can't play football with you. I'm not Alice. I'm Kay. Like this weird robot chick who just, you know, she folded towels and made dinner and then hid. She didn't want to fucking interact with the family. She didn't want to smash fucking Mr. Brady's bust. She didn't want to do any of that bullshit. She didn't want to get railed by Sam the Butcher and make uncomfortable maid-like noises from the back while everybody was going, what the fuck's happening with Alice? Oh, shit, Sam's in there. Side of beef, right? Let's make a joke. No, Kay was just all fucking quiet and efficient. She wasn't a member of the family. She was just a goddamn maid, man. So then they had to go to the diner where Alice had picked up a job as a waitress after years as a domestic. 
And then she, they all ordered ice cream and peanuts, and she's like, fuck you, you get fruit cup and kale. That's it. That's what you fucking eat. And they went, we love you, Alice. And we said, she said, oh, I love you guys too. And she, they're like, come back. She's like, I thought you didn't want me. And they're like, we thought you didn't want to be there. And there was all a miscommunication, Three's Company style. And then Chrissy bounded in, you saw her nipples. Joyce DeWitt was kind of good looking. You'd settle for her if Chrissy was doing something else. Jack was cool. You'd want to hang out with him. And there's Alice to bring you a fruit cup, and you're like, all right, cool. And then you don't even think about Kay, because like, fuck Kay. She wasn't playing football with anybody, being cool or whatever the fuck. Bring Alice home and send Kay fucking walking, right? Well, in this fucking world of recording podcasts, that's that's fucking, I have audacity. This is Alice. I'm talking to Alice right now. She's got her feet on my shoulders. I got her fucking knee. Actually, her knees are on my shoulders. I'm face deep. I'm talking right into Alice right fucking now. Fuck Sam the Butcher. She's making noises she's never made before as I talk right into Alice. Meanwhile, Apple's like, dude, you got to use K. I can't use K. Fuck, don't try to fucking trick me into using K. I can't deal with K. K doesn't play football. K doesn't put makeup on. K's not going to smash a bust. K's not going to go ahead and fucking have a, a lookalike sister come over and be a drill sergeant and tell me to bounce a quarter off my bed and make my bed super tight. Fuck that. K's got no siblings. K was raised an only child. That's why she's calm. That's why she doesn't like chaos. Alice likes chaos. Alice likes six kids, dinner for everybody, fucking lover's delights, fucking whipped cream in the face, tiger's loose, ass to turf in the back. That's Alice, motherfucker. That's audacity. Fucking, that's, uh, your fucking garage band is too fucking prim and proper. It's going to fold my clothes properly, be fucking all bloodless. I don't want bloodless garage band i need life i need emotions god damn it i need fucking bursting and fucking yelling and happy and peppy and fucking complicated audacity's complicated it might be a one button operation but like alice it's complicated because she might fuck sam but she also might chew box you don't know fucking what you want to think about alice she could be a switch hitter she could be totally bi she could be smelling all the girls panties and handing all the boys underwears when she's folding it but nobody gives a fuck because she makes a great goddamn tetrazzini as you bend her over a goddamn countertop you go backwards on alice that's a fucking Hey everybody, it's the holiday season There's a poop on the floor And I know the reason A dookie on the counter and a turd in your mail A fudge dragon floating in your fruit cocktail See pick presents for you to unwrap Hey look everybody, it's a big hunk of crap We all know the reason for this cavalcade It's just a happy Merry Christmas from the Shit Brigade Shit Brigade, Shit Brigade Happy Merry Christmas from the Shit Brigade Shit Brigade, Shit Brigade It's a sneaky, 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 sneaky serenade Ask kebabs hiding in the pumpkin pie A peanut feel grumpy on your holiday tie can't seem to find the Christmas mistletoe There's a boot on a string right above you Oh no A foul baby's crying away in a manger An anal snake's lurking, but there's no danger The kiddies all know where the fudge is made It's just a happy Merry Christmas from the ship brigade Ship brigade, ship brigade Happy Merry Christmas from the ship brigade Ship brigade, ship brigade It's a sneaky, 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 sneaky Serenade Monkey tails lurking at every house Tiny Christmas presents from a tiny sphincter mouse Stockings are hung by the chimney with care I love a sneak pocket is waiting in there The kids can't sleep because they're super if it's an eclipse biscuit, then forget to wipe Let loose that caboose, don't you be afraid It's just a happy Merry Christmas from the Ship Brigade Ship Brigade, Ship Brigade Happy Merry Christmas from the Ship Brigade Ship Brigade, Ship Brigade It's a sneaky, 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 sneaky serenade Ship Brigade, Ship Brigade Happy Merry Christmas from the Ship Brigade Thank you.